And good evening and welcome to the Great Red Bank Valley. Tonight, it's the big one. Carly Tire High School Football here on the EYT Media Network. It is Central Clarion. At Red Bank Valley tonight, the battle of the undefeated tier. Boy, this is one that everybody had their finger pointed to, and I know folks are gathering. They're gathering around the fence here. The stands are full. We pulled up about a little after 5 o'clock, and there were already people all over the place. This is the one that we everyone's uh, been waiting for, as we said, Dave, and uh, should be a fantastic football game here tonight. Well, Mike, we wanted the big game, and we got the big game. Everybody wanted to get Clarion and Red Bank through with a 9-0 record, and they made it. And uh, this is where it all, the, the, what is it, the rubber meets the road, basically, here at Red Bank Valley uh, tonight. Should be a fantastic football game. And as you mentioned, Mike, we got here early, and fans were already in the bleachers and looking across the visiting side where Clarion is. Uh, they're already lined up around the fences here, and, that's uh, that's a testament to a big football game. The Red Bank Valley fans have been here a long time, too, this, this evening, and uh, they're ready for some football. They sure are at senior night here. They already went through the football players. They did start really early. We understand why, because the seniors kind of stretched out all along the Red Bank Creek there and went back quite a ways. So they have a lot of seniors. And that, that's a testament to, to the participation of the kids here at Red Bank Valley, not only in football but in band and in cheerleading and all the different things of you know the, these kids certainly participate in all those different um, activities and it's really good to see yeah it is I'll, I'll tell you they there's still uh, 10 or 15 of them on the other side of the field waiting to come across the field and be introduced so that's uh that's a big thing they're involved with a lot of activities mike and that's one thing you like to see at high school your kids being involved whether it be in the band cheerleading football Basketball, um, yep, F- soccer, FBLA, and volleyball, everything. Yeah. F- FBLA, That's Student right. Senate. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been in high school. I imagine they have a lot of a lot of different clubs out there uh, these days, basically. Yeah, we were down here on Tuesday for the volleyball match, and they had soccer going on tonight, football. And uh, we have uh, the Carly Tire pregame show rolling on here. And we do want to thank all the folks here at Red Bank Valley for rolling out the red carpet to us. And that is sponsored by McMillan's Carpet Outlet. They always do a fantastic job. They really move the whole kind of press box around. We have our own little area here. Uh, they were trying to separate Tyler, I think, from the rest of the press box. It's usually what, with the, they put up fences in the zoo for that, too, don't they? <laughs> I think so, Basically, too. Basically, try to isolate it a little bit. But uh, we're really looking forward to bringing you a great broadcast tonight with our replays and uh, Brett on the field and Nico, our other cameramen. So uh, it should be a fantastic night for a football game. We had a little rain here a little bit earlier, yep. Mike, and uh, looks like it was just a clearing up shower, and everything looks really nice right now. All right, so we're going to take our first time out. We're going to come back. We'll talk about the teams. Uh, Dave Kidd has had a chance to talk uh, to the coaches here. We'll go inside the game a little bit. We'll go around the league with games going on tonight, let you know what our scoreboard will be. It's all coming up here on the Carly Tire pregame show. And tonight, it's Goodwin Central Clary and Red Bank Valley here from Red Bank Valley High School. And you're watching Carly Tire High School football right here on the EYT Media Network. Are you ready to boost your team spirit? Look no further than shopteamwear.com, your one-stop destination for all your school and team apparel needs. We've got you covered whether you're a diehard fan searching for the latest gear or aiming to fundraise for your team. And here's the best part, you're in control. Choose the products and prices that work for you. Discover the ultimate apparel shopping and fundraising experience at shopteamwear.com. It's time to gear up, fundraise with ease, and make a statement together. Boost your team spirit, empower your community. Shopteamwear.com, where passion meets fashion.
Seabrook, a division of M&B Group, is your trusted local ready-mix supplier for residential and commercial projects. Dubrook provides a full line of decorative concrete, as well as concrete supplies, along with a variety of concrete tools and accessories. Dubrook can provide services large or small for residential and commercial projects to contractors or homeowners. Dubrook is here to provide you with options and ideas to make planning your next project simple. Let Dubrook help you with the supplies you need to get the job done. Dubrook is proud to support our local communities with plants in Clarion, Du Bois, St. Mary's, Butler, Evan City, Bradford, and Meadville. Call 1 844 382 7665. I chose MPRC because it was great to have a local affordable option here in northwestern Pennsylvania. I live in this community and I wanted to stay in this community. Learn more at discovernprc.org. Locally owned and operated, Hager Paving of Strattonville provides a range of services. Hot mix asphalt, cold patch asphalt, tar and chipping, and seal coating. Hager Paving's reputation in business is based on customer service, referrals, and your satisfaction. Serving residential, commercial, industrial, and local municipalities throughout western Pennsylvania. Exceptional service, exceptional quality. That's Hager Paving of Strattonville. Call 814-764-5080. That's 814-764-5080 for Hager Paving. There's Brad over there, getting a great shot here at Red Bank Valley High School, the concession stand. All busy with folks getting something to eat here so they can sit back, relax, and enjoy this one here from Red Bank Valley. Carly Tire pregame show here on Explore Clarion and D9 Sports. Touch with Clarion Red Bank Valley tonight. Mike Kalinowski and Dave Cadis. Rocking and rolling here from Red Bank Valley. And uh, while we're in the Carly Tire pregame show, why don't we go inside the game brought to you by Brookville Equipment, Dave. You had a chance to talk to uh, coaches and uh, you had a really good conversation said, with Blaine Gold, too. And um, uh, What are they talking about here with their teams here tonight? Yeah, I'm getting to be like a part of the family now here. You know, um, I'm, I'm waiting for Coach Gold to, to invite me on a summer vacation or something like that because we've had so many Red Bank games. I call them in the evenings and pretty laid back and not as intense as I see him on, on, on the field and everything. So I've really enjoyed conversations with all the coaches this year, and I appreciate their attention and, and calling me back and me calling them. But conversation with him the other night was, was really good. He wanted to, to make a couple little shout-outs and everything. He's really pleased with his offense, as we all know, because um, they're putting up a lot of points without a doubt. Red Bank has been outscoring their opponents this year 491 to 108. So offensively, they've done a really good job. And Jason Kundek, who's his offensive coordinator, is very pleased with the way the offense is run. And he wanted me to, to, to say something, uh, shout-out, because I'm really impressed with their offense, the way they run things. That's a big thing. We talked a little bit about the quarterback, of course, Braylon, Bray, Braylon Wagner. And uh, one interesting fact he told me the other night, and I didn't realize, we were here at the game and he broke the record. He be, broke Jake Doherty's record. But he did it in 70 less attempts than Jake Doherty had back in the day. And he did it in two less games Jake Doherty had. Um, so he goes, that even highlights it a little bit more, how, how great that record was. And uh, uh, to break something like that with some games remaining. So he's going to pad those stats a good bit. I also talked a little bit about his running back, Drew, Bar Drew Breyers. I like him an awful lot. Seen him in the football games and cutting it back. And uh, he's got that nice sense for the goal line. And uh, he said, yeah, we'd like to get about 75 yards out of him every game, and we've been averaging about 79 out of him. So that's another plus on their offense. They'd like to balance it out a little bit this game on offense, try to get it thrown out there 50% of the time and run it 50% 50, 50 of the time. So that's a big thing. Talked about his defense a little bit. Very pleased with his defense. As I mentioned earlier, uh, they've given up 108 points this year. Uh, that's averaging about 10 points a game, 9 points a game. And he's very pleased and surprised by a couple of his players. Number 50, Brandon Ross, has been a big surprise for him this year on defense and uh, has nothing but accolades to talk to, to him about. And also number 51, Caden Adams. Uh, Mike, you might realize it, but... When the, as the course of the game goes on, Caden Adams, their, their linebacker, number 51, we're going to call his name a lot tonight, he actually calls the defenses out on uh, on the field. And he's a leader. He played in a championship game that you, you and Bob Dunkel called a couple years ago. So he's got a lot of that uh, experience. 
And going into a big game like this, he said, you know, he's been there, done that. I'm, he, I'm sure that he's going to be talking to the team a little bit before the game and, uh, you know, saying, hey, you know, this is a big game, but you got to put it in perspective and everything else. Once you come out of the game healthy, uh, playoffs start maybe next week or the week afterwards. And he's happy with his goals. They swept the conference this year. That was the first goal, and uh, that, that's been a big thing. So they might have a bye next week. They might be playing a game. It's senior night. All the grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and girlfriends are here, so I think a lot of the Red Bank Valley kids are going to play a majority of the games. Uh, talk to Dave Eggleton, too. Uh, his goals, when I talk to Davey, it's the same thing. Hey, we take it one game at a time. We realize it is a big game. Uh, it is a big game, and we want our kids to enjoy it. This is probably the first big game we've played in since Port Allegheny earlier in the year. Everybody around the community and around the, the county uh, know it's a big game, and uh, our kids are really pumped for it. And I said, do you do anything different? And he goes, no, we just go out and practice and say, hey, we're going to go out and we're going to do our best and we're going to try to win a football game. So he's real pleased with his offensive and defensive uh, units too, and he's really looking for, forward to the football game tonight. All right. <clears throat> so there you go. Dave Kate is talking to all those folks. Again, Brookville Equipment sponsoring our Inside the Game here tonight. We'll go around the league. We're going to check the forecast, too. We'll get Cadis' keys all coming up here momentarily. We're at Red Bank Valley High School tonight. It's Carly Tire High School football. We'll take a quick time out. And you're watching this great football game on Explore Clarion on D9Sports.com. Hey, Julie, nice deck. Did you get that at Tio Nesta Builder Supply? It's Tio Nesta Builder Supply, and yes, Dave, I did. Wonder if they sell siding and roofing at Tio Nesta Builder Supply. It's Tio Nesta, and yes, Tio Nesta Builder Supply has that too. Come on, Dave, you've never been there? They have two showrooms for anything home improvement. Mom got a custom kitchen there, Bill down the street got the materials for his garage. They have this awesome website, www.tianestabuilders.us. You can buy online. They really have everything for the home. Wow, I'm heading over to Tio Nesta. <laughs> I know, I know. Tianesta Builders. Tianesta Builders Supply Home Improvement Center. Family owned and operated since 1958 with locations in Tianesta and Shippenville. That sounds good. I'll check them out online at tianestabuilders.us. U.S. Oaks Building Supply is dedicated to providing quality building products to the community. You will always find what you need for your home improvement project and get great advice on how to do the job at Oaks Building Supply. Customer satisfaction is a top priority. Oaks Building Supply, for all your building and lumber supply needs. Located on Route 66 in Lucinda. back at Red Bank Valley High School football field. It is the EYT Media Network Explore Clarion D9 Sports.com Carly Tire High School football and uh, getting set here for this big one tonight between Central Clarion and Red Bank Valley. Time to go around the league tonight and games going on and got to get our sponsor in there too that's uh, MHY Family Services. Uh, last night uh, County knocked off uh, Kawakwinesk Valley 20 to 6. I think that's how you say it. Conaquinessing. No, it's Conaqu It's C O W A N E S Q U E. I played the fifth. And the, you know, and you know what their uh, slogan is? 
Boo. Alphabet soup. Boo, because it's cow <laughs> equinus, cow, right? Okay, gotcha, man, gotcha. Cow to your winner. Tonight, uh, of course, Punxsie is at Union AC Valley, Otto Eldred at Port Allegheny, Brockway is at Cameron County. Kane of Bradford, Brookville at Ridgeway, Cowdy is at, uh, we already did that one. Dubois at Hollidaysburg, Monotau at Keystone, Mount Union at Carn City, Chestnut Ridge at Clearfield, and Kerwinsville at Tussie Mountain. Breaking news. Yeah. Senior day has just ended on wow. the field. That started at 6.15. It is now, what time? 6.45. 6.45. Longest <laughs> senior day that I've seen in a long time. They have the record. They're winning. Red Bank Valley. They had, as I said, they had the seniors. They were lined up all the way down the Red Bank Creek here. They're just lucky it wasn't high water. That's exactly right. Yep. So, But uh, there we go. Going inside, you can always check out the scores at d9sports.com. And again, around the district, brought to you by MHY Family Services. Field conditions tonight, sponsored by Cousin Basil Restaurant. We had that little shower pass through. It might slicken things up a little bit. Uh, but the the field, though, with the soccer uh, match here earlier this week, looks pretty good tonight. Yeah, it does. New lines on the field. They've, they've spray-painted the lines again, and uh, looks pretty good. No mud. Yeah. No yeah. mud for end of October. How about that? Yeah, we'll take it for now. We'll yeah. see what happens as the game goes on. Weather forecast uh, sponsored by J&J Feeds and Needs and Trailer Sales. Well, your forecast for tonight, uh, I'm still on the shorts for one more week, I think. Uh, 61 degrees is the low. Warm with low clouds. Maybe just a passing shower is all we expect tonight. But then things are going to start dropping off the weekend and then next week. Could see some snow by Wednesday. Dave Kate is all happy about that. Oh, too. yeah. We were loving the snow. It can snow like crazy, man. 12 inches of snow, <laughs> that sort of stuff. <laughs> Mike, one of the things I wanted to mention, uh, I didn't mention earlier in the game as the Wildcats uh, come out onto the field. Uh, interesting stat from Mike Kilroy tonight. He had said that Thomas Euchard has made 69 extra points this year. Clarion's defense has only given up 67 points. Dear Lord, that's something. That's a big stat. Here comes Central Clarion onto the football field. And not to take any away from Mason Klaus on the Red Bank side either. I'll tell you what, because oh. the, the kicking game here tonight is going to be one heck of an inside game. And, and <clears throat> what's going to happen? That, that's a different. That's a small little piece of the game that may turn out to be a large piece of the See, game. That's how they should have changed the rules tonight. If you got into the red zone to the 20, you had to kick a field goal. Yeah, that's Then exactly have a challenge right. between the two kickers and see what happened. Well, we were talk, We watched Klaus be kicking. Mason was kicking the ball from the 25, 30-yard line, and he was making them. He yep. line-drived one, but he hit three, two other ones like straight away. So that's going to be an interesting part of the game tonight. And uh, while we have a chance to, why don't we get in Cadis's keys to the game, Dave? You know, you looked at both sides. What do you think uh, each team needs to do to come out with a win? Well, I think at the beginning, you know, these guys have had uh, – both teams have this game circled for a long time too because Red Bank beat them, beat Central Clarion last year. So I'm sure they want to get a little payback too. But who's going to come out with the jitters? Who's going to come out? Is anybody going to come out with the jitters and, you know, try to get their basically their, – their self-established and everything? And coaches too. We always look at the players but the coaches. I mean, this has been a heck of a week. They've, they most likely have utilized – Every minute early in the week, trying to figure out how to scheme the edge, how to get their kids focused, uh, watch film, all that kind of stuff. So I think that's going to be a big thing. One of the big keys of the games, Mike, I really think offensively and defensively, uh, how the offense is throwing the ball. And the defense has got to win one-on-one -on -one battles and matchups and exploit these areas when you have a chance, uh, especially the cornerbacks, who's going to be covering a lot of good people, the Burfords and the Klauses and the Georges and all of these guys. Okay, Your guy better be better than their guy if you're going to win that football game. And these defensive backs got to come out with a ton of confidence and basically be aggressive. And once again, Who's going to get a better push on the offensive lines? Is Red Bank going to really dominate and come out and, and push Clarion around, or is Clarion going to, offensive line going to come out and push people around? So I think that's a big key to the game tonight. I was really happy to look down here earlier, probably about a half hour ago, and, and I always like to check out who the referees are tonight. And, uh, you know, one thing is a good friend of mine, Dave Blair, is the white hat tonight, and Bud Buffano's down there, and Barry – uh, what's Barry's last name? I forget Barry. Abbott. But Barry Abbott, yeah. But we got some experienced officials on that field tonight. And uh, knowing Dave Blair, the white hat down there, he's uh, he's refereed PSAC games. He might, he might have a PSAC game tomorrow. So I think he'll, he'll keep it under control and he'll establish who's the boss right off the bat tonight, Mike. All right, so there you go. And those are Cadis' keys to the game brought to you by Kale's Kitchens. You won't find more alliteration anywhere in the world <laughs> than right there. How about that? 
All right, we're getting set here for the National Anthem. We're just going to hold here so we can bring all of this to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have one a, a shout out. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, to the people down in Fort Mill, South Carolina. They're in their driveway right now, <laughs> and uh, they're having a they're having a little driveway party watching the game tonight. So shout out to the people in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Yeah, we get a lot of folks. I know last year, last couple years, I know some folks up in Clarion would someone had a big white house and they would like take the big projector and put it up on the wall and. You know, it's just nice to get uh, folks uh, around and enjoying the, the football game. And it's, it's about these kids. And hopefully tonight it's a great experience on both sides. And it's a fantastic game. We've got the anthem here coming up. So we're going to bring it all to you live here from Red Bank Valley. Emily Nightmare, Lily Burke, Nevaeh Martin, Peyton Schweitzer, Bree Ferringer, Bethany Crocious, Morena Harmon, and Chloe Chestnut. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Bank Valley High School, nicely done as always. Yeah, I'm looking for them on the field where they're singing, and they're singing right next to me. Yeah, they're right there. Great job, ladies. That was pretty good. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering where the heck are they singing from? I'm looking all over the place, and they're right next to us yeah. in the press box. There. They're all right there. Yep. All right, so uh, we have the anthem in, and we're a few minutes away. We're going to have the coin toss. That's all coming up. Red Bank's going to be coming through the sign here. Get a shot here of Red Bank Valley as they come through. Boy, I'll tell you what, you know, a lot of times when there's still about six minutes or so on the clock, you see these teams kind of hanging around. And you look at the sign that the Red Bank Valley cheerleaders have. If we could get a shot of that, that's fantastic. It says, last year wasn't a mistake. We are here to keep the record straight. <laughs> How about that? There it is. So right back on the field, now the officials will find the team captains, and we're going to get set up here for the ceremonial coin toss. It's this is yeah. this is one of those games, Dave. You, you do get the coin toss. We talk about it a lot. Uh, do you take the ball tonight? Or I you? want the ball, man. Give it to me because both teams are scoring at such an unbelievable clip. Mike, that's a big thing. Uh, Clarion has outscored its opponents this year, 554-67. to 67. And Red Bank has outscored their opponents 491 to 108. So I want every possession I could possibly get. So I'm taking the ball right off the bat. Yeah, these two teams in the top three in the state in scoring, Clarion number one, Red Bank number three. And they can put points on the board, of course, so the playoffs will be getting underway next week. We'll have to see how all that plays out for these teams, who gets buys and things like that. Yeah, we don't have all the answers to that. We were talking uh, on the ride down. Mike and I traveled together, and we're talking about, hey, who's who's what here, you know? And uh, we won't find out a lot of that till tonight, and you can stay in contact with us. And uh, Mike Kilroy will have all those answers for you on D9 Sports probably, Mike? Yeah, he'll have that at uh, Explore Clarion at D9Sports.com. 
So, Mike, uh, with that, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, too, next week, we got another busy week coming up, too, here on EYT Sports is volleyball playoffs, too. Clarion Limestone will be in a home match coming up on Tuesday. We'll have that for you. Here we go, though, this ceremonial coin toss. Yeah, it's been the talk of the town with the football game and all the volleyball going on. I tried to get through town tonight and stopped at CBS. They stopped me and asked me, who do I think is going to win the game tonight? <laughs> I went over to Pogo and saw Brandy and Dugan over there. They're asking me uh, who's going to win the game. I couldn't get all my work done today. Yeah. Mike, everybody wanted to talk football and talk a little bit about, you know, the great job you guys did with volleyball the last, the last couple of weeks. So here we go. They're still talking with the players there. I will step on Sneaking through. Dave Eagleton, Blaine Gold out there with their teams. Yeah, we saw both teams warming up, uh, you know, and you know, you check out that NFL stuff where everybody starts talking smack and everything else. And both teams and warm-ups just going about their business. Yeah, they even walked right across the 50 right next to each <laughs> other. <laughs> no. And just kind of looked over. Well, they're giving everybody the Boy. dissertation, and they're yeah, making sure they're the one the one side is heads and the other side <laughs> is tails, Mike. So here we go. So Red Bank won the toss. Uh, they won the toss. They're taking it. They want the give me the ball. Give me the ball. So Red Bank's going to take the ball. And just a few, few minutes till kickoff here now. Yeah, I think they're going to hurry up kickoff. I don't think there'll be too much waiting tonight. No, because we're right at 6.57. Clarion will go into their little knee on that side, tradition. Larry Weiser, I believe, started that. He's here tonight at the game. Yeah, if you're watching, too, uh, I know they've already panned around the field. This, it's unbelievable. Uh, folks all around the fence. The stands are full. See the fence kind of Yeah, I forgot encircled. about the, the right side of the fence where there's a ton of people all the way around the red mat, even up on the hill by yeah. the scoreboard. Up so. on that uh, hill, yeah. So we're going to get started early. Klaus's will go back deep. Uh, Kale will join them back there. Both of the Klaus's. Mason will be on that left side. Kale in the middle and on the right side will be Owen. Euchard can kick two. Yeah, we showed Thomas last week, Mike, against St. Mary's, and we gave him the Hager, Paver, Hager Paving player of the game for his long field goal against the Dutch. So here we go. Euchard set to tee things off here. Kickoff is sponsored by Penn State Dubois. And here we go with what should be a classic. They're going to squirt that down the field, going to go out of bounds, and a flag will come in. They're not going to kick that to those big guys in the back. So it'll come out to the 35-yard line. Central Clarion will have the football. First quarter sponsor is the Clarion Forest VNA. Byers will be in the backfield. The quarterback is Wagner. And you'll have to bear with us, too. These Red Bank uniforms are really cool, but... Very hard to see at night. <laughs> yes, yes, they, too bad they couldn't give us those, the regular uniforms, but they're gonna miss a gray tonight. Wagner in the shotgun, here we go from the 35. Gonna give that to Byers over the right side. Byers trying to turn the corner and he's not gonna do it. He'll lose about five back to the 30 yard line. Well, good job coming up that secondary. For Clarion, meeting Byers, and Mike, we talked about him in pregame. He likes running wide and cutting back. That time, the cutback just wasn't there. Second and 15 here for the Bulldogs. It's in the man in motion. They're going to give that little flip pass. That is Kale trying to turn the corner, and Kale this time. There's a penalty flag that's going to come in. Ferguson kind of put his hands up like this. Smith was over there, too, in on the tackle. Might have been a horse collar. I know there was a grab a hold of the back of that jersey. Yeah, they're checking it out. It was done on that far right side. I think it's going to go against Clarion here. 
face, face mask. mask. Yep. Okay. So that'll mark it off. That'll be a first down here for Redback Valley. Oh, they're going to say, so the personal foul's not an automatic first down. So sets up a second down and one. So a second down and one here for Red Bank Valley. Always forget about that. That is not an automatic first down. And in motion, looking to throw Wagner. Fires that football. Caught by Klaus. Makes uh, Burford miss. And it's a first down all the way down to the 41-yard line of Central Clark. That wow. is about a 15-yard pickup. Well, wow, Klaus was <clears throat> that standard route that he, that he does, and he runs it very, very well and good timing the whole way around on that play. Byer or Wagner able to get the ball right to Burfer or right to Klaus and uh, first on Red Bank. Twins on each side. And off here to Byers. Byers, that little stutter step is going to get him maybe two as he takes it down to the 39-yard line. Take a look here in on the tackle for Clarion was Braylon Beckwith that yeah. time. And he's had a good year too, Mike. We haven't talked about him too much. He's had a good year at the linebacking position, done a great job. And all those guys down there, we don't give them enough credit. Coleman Slater down there too. Uh, all those inside guys, Matt Alston, Doing a great job for Clarion this year. Shotgun formation, second down. Close to eight here for Red Bank for the 39-yard line of Central Clarion. Wagner looks left side, firing, looking for Klaus. Good coverage downfield by Burford on Klaus that time. Didn't give Wagner a lot of room to get that ball in there. Now, good coverage by Burford, and Klaus running that route just a little bit too close to the sidelines. And Byers or Wagner not able to get the ball to him. Mike, one thing I'm noticing early is that defensive line for Central Clarion all standing up. Nobody in the down position on this first series, so they can get a good look at where the ball's going. And if you notice them, they're all standing up on the line of scrimmage. Nobody in that down position. Trips on the right side. Wagner works to the right side. Comes back across the middle. He was under some pressure by Smith. Tried to find... Klaus in the middle of the field, but overshoots that. It is fourth down, and the punt team comes on. Yeah, Tommy Smith with good coverage for the Wildcats. A lot of pressure from Smith, I should say, but a lot of pressure. <clears throat> Klaus to punt back deep is a smale here for Central Clarion. <clears throat> Owen Klaus ready to punt. Smale waits back at his 10. I don't know. They may fake out of this one. We will see. Good snap. Klaus is going to get rid of it. Smale's going to let it bounce. Takes a red bank bounce, and it is going to go. Does it make it into the end zone? It makes it into the end zone. So to come out to the 20-yard line, that's a red bank. will have their first possession. So, so far, Clarion got the ball first. Uh, they were able to move the ball a bit, but then the defense stiffened up for uh, – for the, for, 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 for the Wildcats. Yeah, the defense for the Wildcats stiffened up. Yeah, just trying to look at some of those schemes they're doing defensively and having those linemen all standing up and looking where the ball's going, giving them just a little split second, a little bit more time to figure out where the ball is going to go. Uh, that's something we haven't seen all year. New little wrinkle that Davey Eagleton has put in this evening. Harrison's in the backfield here with Ferguson. Twins out to the left, twins to the right here for Central Clarion. Ball to 20. Ferguson's going to keep it over the left side. And Ferguson will lose the football. It comes out, and it looks like Red Bank's going to have it. We'll see what the official rolls. Was he down? Here's the replay. See Ferguson. Boom. That ball is out rolling. And they're going to say, I believe, though, Central Clarion's going to hold on to the football. Yeah, he's going to hold on to it. My good replay by our camera guys down there. The ball was, ball was a little bit out. Picks up about four, second down and six. Of course, the officials, that they do not have the replay. We do. Harrison looks for some room to run. Nowhere to go, and he's going to be just swarmed over. Loss on the play, back to the original line of scrimmage. You'll lose four, sets up a third down and ten. Yeah, good job by Red Bank's defense that time. Brandon Ross in there for that Red Bank Valley defense. Nowhere for Harrison to run. And I'll bring up a third down. Come on, Red Bank! Make a stop here, let's 
Quinn will be in the backfield this time with Ferguson. They'll split the Twins on each side. Third, or third down here in 10, ball back at the 20-yard line. Ferguson looking to throw. Ferguson firing the football. Picked off, intercepted. That's Mason Klaus. Klaus with the interception all the way back to right around the 20-yard uh, line. Well, the big first play of the game, the big turnover in Clarion's territory, and Klaus just read Jace Ferguson the whole way. Burford trying to clear, and Klaus just stepped right in front of him. Big-time interception for Klaus. First down, Red Bank and Central Clarion's territory. That's right at the 19-yard line. They're in the Dubrook red zone. Ball was picked off right around the 30. Klaus brought it back to the 19. Red Bank now in business. They're going to split twins out to that right side. Gold out there along with Kale. Twins on this left side. With Klaus on this side for Wagner. Wagner looks to throw. Fires that ball. Thrown a little bit behind his intended receiver out there. That was intended to Gold. Yeah, that quick slant, and uh, Red Bank has really made a living on that this year, Mike. Throwing it to George and also to Klaus on the year, that quick slant, but that time Wildcats had it pretty well covered. Wagner getting the shotgun from the 19, second down and 10. Wagner, and we got movement. And we'll see, the officials will talk for a moment. Looked like Garrett Schaefer, the offensive right tackle. He did flinch. Looked like the Wildcats on that left side moved a little bit too. It's going to be against Clarion. So offsides against the defense. That'll move him five yards down to the 14-yard line. Sets up a second down here in five. So from the 14. Byers in the backfield. Twins on each side. Here's Wagner. Rolls to the right side. Looking, looking, looking. Wagner's going to tuck that football, and Wagner steps out of bounds. He'll have the first down. It'll be a first and goal. Just inside that 10. Looks right down around the 8-yard line. Yeah, good job by Wagner. Really nobody open. A lot of room on that far hash, and he picked up that stick, a first down marker, and just headed right for it. Mike stepped out of bounds, first down red back. George will be the wide out on the far side along with Kale. Roop on this side along with Klaus for Red Bank Valley. Here's Wagner in the shotgun. Byers in the backfield from the eight yard line. He's gonna hand that off, little draw play, hands it to Byers, and Byers is gonna actually lose a yard back near the nine yard line. Brady Quinn in on that tackle. So second and goal for the nine. One yard loss. Same setup, George and Kale on the right side, Roop and uh, Klaus on this left side. Fire sidecar left for Wagner. Second and goal for the nine. Wagner throws, caught, Kale, and down near the one. So third and goal. Boy, did he get uh, smacked on that one, but uh, held on to that football well. He really did. And I'll tell you, Wagner did a nice job. He came out here in front of the press box, the Red Bank Valley side, held the ball, held, held the ball, held the ball until Kale cleared, got himself open, and. Ball's at the one. Third and goal. We have a whistle. Uh, are you looking at the spot maybe here or? Yeah, the white yeah. hat, yeah, they're going to move it in. They're going to move it another yard in. It's actually right around the two is where it really is. Yeah, the far stick has it yeah. about three yards, almost to the, the three-yard line. So here we go, ball to two. Here's Wagner, the double side car. Going to give it to Byers. Byers is tripped up and stopped short of the goal line. Charlie Hepfel in there for the Wildcats. Sticking his nose in there. Fourth and goal. And he actually lost a little bit back near the three almost now. 
So a loss of one. Well, big fourth down call here, Mike. I don't think there was any hesitation by Coach Gold. He was going to go for it. So fourth down and goal. Ball sitting at the three-yard line. Here's Wagner. Shotgun formation. Looks to the sideline. He's still got time on that play clock down to ten. Six down to five. Byers, or, uh, Wagner came right up under center, follows his blockers, and I don't think he gets in. He does not. He stopped at the one-yard line. He Clarence pushed. defense stops him. Yeah, he pushed. He thought he had a good surge, but that defensive line for Central Clarion came up, led by Jimmy Kerr, and he just wasn't able to fall into the end zone. Mike, the ball would have landed inside the one-yard line, inside the goal line, and that's basically where they're going to mark it. So big play on fourth down. Central Clarion will take over. So here we go, Central Clarion now. They got 99 yards to go. Tall task here tonight. These defenses have been good. Thought maybe that Klaus pick would change things quickly here for Red Bank, but Clarion's defense comes up big. And a flag on the play. It's a procedure penalty against the Clarion offense. So the ball's at the one, half the distance makes it go out the length of a football. There's not too much. There's not a lot of room down there, Mike. They moved it. I think the public address announcer said it. They moved it back a half an yeah, inch. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Ferguson, he's got Beckwith in the backfield with him. Burford is the wide out. They got two back set. Ferguson's going to keep it, tries to give him a little bit of room, pushes forward. He'll get out near the four-yard line, give him close to three. Yeah, good smart play. Just let one of your, lead, your leading rusher handle the football right up the gut. Good surge. So he has a little bit of room to work with. So Ferguson up here it's now a second down in boy it's at least seven Harrison in the backfield with Ferguson Ferguson still standing in his end zone Ferguson's gonna keep it Ferguson looks a room up the middle Ferguson can move nice run by Ferguson he's gonna be stopped just shy of the 10 yard line right around about the eight so it's a pickup of about four Sets up a third down. Yeah, what's the look, Mr. Kabat? Yeah, three? It's about three, I believe. About three, looking at that far sideline. Just so. keeping it on the ground. They just want to get some room, Mike. They want to get some room out there, and hopefully along the way they can pick up a first down. They, they plan on running it here because Burford's the only wide receiver out there. Here's Ferguson, third down and three. Trying to draw a red bank here, barking those signals. Keeps the football. Tries to turn the corner, does. First down and more. He's out to the 25 and under the 30 yard line. We'll see where they spot him out. Dang it. Just, needed. Yeah, they, they needed three and I think he got, oh, he got a lot. Well, he went from the eight all the way up to about the 24, so that's about 16. <laughs> Good job by that right side of Clarion's <laughs> offensive line. Five and a half to go here in quarter number one. It's been a good one so far. Clarion Forest VNA, our first quarter sponsor. Colby Wright doing a good job with Contain, trying to block down. Gave Jace Ferguson a little bit of running room around that right side. Ferguson hands it off here. And over that left side, running with that football, that That's was Nazer. a Nazer. Mm -hmm. Boy, Nazer's, he's going to get up near the 25, maybe the 26. So it's a pickup of a couple. Yeah, let's see where they're going to mark down. him. Yeah, they're going to give him, I think you're right, Mike. I think two on the play. Yep. Second down and eight here. The ball just across the 25-yard line. So officially at the 26, just under five minutes now. As that clock moving first quarter. No score here in this battle between these two unbeatens. Quinn will come out to join Harrison in the backfield. So they got the double sidecar going. Beck with the tight end went in motion. They're going to give that. Nope. Ferguson tried to give it to Quinn. Pulled it back in. Ferguson's going to be hit and dropped. And he's sacked on the play. 
He'll lose about three. Yeah, really nowhere to run for Jace Ferguson. And, Mike, I keep watching this matchup out here between Ashton Kale and Burford, and nobody giving an in shot here. One-on-one -on -one coverage, no help back there for Ashton Kale. And Burford and him going at it all night. Now they're going to switch it up a little bit. They're going to split twins left, twins right. Ferguson out of the shotgun. Second down here at about 12. Ferguson flushed out of the pocket. Ferguson directing traffic. He's got a man breaking open. Caught by Quinn. First down. Midfield. And a first down for Central Clarion as they'll take it into Red Bank territory. They're going to say, though, he is out. First of all, at the 50-yard line. That's a gain of 31. Yeah, Brady Quinn and Jace Ferguson just directing traffic out there. Told him that, hey, pick it up and go. Go long, and he did. Jace Ferguson laid it out there to him. So Clarion with a big play on their drive. So there you go, Ferguson. To Quinn there on the big play. Stops the clock at 3.50 as uh, he was uh, came down out of bounds after the run. Yeah, I think the 25-second clock is going to run down. This might be a – I don't know if Clarion's going to call a timeout. They are. So Clarendon uses timeout, 3.50 to go here in quarter number one. No score from Red Bank Valley. And you're watching Carly Tire High School Football on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Best of luck this season to all our local football teams. From your one-stop car, truck, and SUV dealer, Clarion Ford Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Visit us on Main Street in Clarion or start online at clarionauto.com. That Wildcat band bringing us back. So here we go. It is Central Clarion football. They have a first and ten ball sitting at midfield. No score here first quarter. 3.50 to go on that clock. It's everything I think folks kind of expected. Yeah, in a defensive so far. Battle. Yep, and that Red Bank Valley defense getting a lot of pressure on Jace Ferguson here in the first quarter, Mike, too. Sort of throwing the game off a little bit for the Clarion offense. So good job by those. Red Bank Valley Bulldogs. Quinn goes in motion. Ferguson spins around, fires that football, and it is going to be incomplete. Trying to find Quinn on the left side. Second down and 10. Clay really not throwing the ball too much, Mike. They were deep in their own territory. A couple passes down there by Jace Ferguson. They haven't attempted four passes on the evening so far, so. Nice little balance of running it a little bit and trying to throw it a little bit tonight so far early in the first quarter. Twins on each side, second down and 10 here for Central Clarion. Ferguson, Red Bank kind of jamming things up front there. Here's Ferguson going to try to run. He's going to be hit and driven backwards. Hit again and finally going to be brought down. Big tackle that time by uh, Klinger. He was yeah. spun around, and he was right in Klinger's arms. Mason Kloss hit him pretty good, too. He'll get forward progress. He'll get about three. Sets up a third down on a long seven. Twins on. Nike trips on that left side. So big third down here with about heading to three minutes left in the first quarter. So here we go, Ferguson in the shotgun. He's got the trips, as I said, off to the left. He's got Burford off to the right side. He's rolling to that left side, looking, looking, looking. Not much there. He's going to have to run. He's hit. He's going to be dropped shy of that first down marker. He'll pick up about five, maybe six yards. He's going to be stopped shy of the 40-yard line. He's down around the 42. Yeah, so fourth down. He tried to get out there, Mike, and just couldn't reach out in front of him. Caden Adams in there on the tackle, coming up and shutting them down. So fourth down, it's close to three. They got to get the 40-yard line. 
As of right now, the offense is staying out there for Central Clarion. Yeah, I see Jace Ferguson still out there. Burford slip wide to the right. So I think it's a good call. Here we go, Ferguson on fourth down and three. Here's the pass, caught by Quinn, and he eludes the tackler. Quinn first down. He'll take it down inside the 35-yard line. They're going to put him out right around the 34. It's a first down. Yeah, big pickup by Brady Quinn. Good pass by Jace Ferguson. Thought Red Bank had him pinned in here one-on-one, -on -one, but Brady Quinn was able to slip out and pick up a big first down. Picks up about eight, Mr. Cadis. Needed the three. So the ball resting at the 34-yard line. Central Clarion with that first down. First down is brought to you by Nick's Auto Body. Mike, we usually get big, big plays by two minutes left in the first quarter. We haven't <laughs> had that big, big, big play yet here in the first quarter. We shall see. Quinn in motion. Going to give it to Quinn. Here's Quinn looking for room on the left side. Quinn tries to turn the corner and cannot do it. And Klaus is there on that to tackle for loss. Yeah, good job by Klaus coming up, and Brady Quinn couldn't get out of his own backfield that time. And, boy, that Klaus has some speed just to that right side and bringing Brady Quinn down for a loss in the backfield. Good play. Well, wow, they're going to give him the line of scrimmage. I thought he was brought down for a loss, but still an excellent job, second and ten. Yeah. What a ball game so far here, this defensive struggle in this first quarter. It's been very methodical here. Here's Ferguson in the shotgun again, second down and 10 from the 34 of Red Bank Valley. Keeps the football on the left side. Ferguson, flag on the play. He got a few yards down near the 31, picked up about three. It's on that left side. It looks like Clarence backing so up. Yeah, just looking. Dave Blair, the referee tonight, looking at Blaine Gold, saying you want it or you don't want it. They're going to back him up. Getting penalties brought to you by Red Bank Chevrolet. Hey, Mr. Cadis, do not make a penalty. Buy that next new car or truck down at Red Bank Chevrolet. That's right. A chance to see Mike Hyman tonight. Told him I was satisfied. Overly satisfied the way <laughs> they treated me down there a couple of weeks ago. So go visit him. So second down. Looks like about 20. Here's Ferguson in the shotgun. Ferguson dropping back. Under pressure now. Tries to dump it off. Tries to get the screen set up and does. There's Quinn. Quinn cuts back inside. Quinn can move, and he's going to be stopped down near the 31-yard line. That's a gain of about 12. So should set up a third here in about eight. Yeah, nice little Maybe screen nine. call. Yeah, good screen call. Brady Quinn, one of your faster guys on the team, just dump it off and see if he can make something happen. So Red Bank doing a good job of bringing him down. About third and seven, yep, Mike. third and seven. So here we go, big third down again. Here's Ferguson in the shotgun. Takes the snap, looks to the right side, flings that ball, caught by Burford. And Burford's going to be wrestled down, and he is right there at the marker. Should have it where, well, where the one official comes in. This is going to be a look across. He needed seven. He's going to be shy. Yeah, I'm looking at the far sidelines. They're not moving the sticks. So he's it at, is going to bring up a fourth down. Yeah, he's out to 25. He needs the 24. So okay. that's it. That's the end of the uh, quarter. Yeah, it must have been in bounds, and they're just going to run that clock out. All right, so that's the end of quarter number one. It is no score here at uh, Red Bank Valley fourth and one for Central Clarion after this timeout. You're watching Carly Tire High School football right here on Explore Clarion at D9Sports.com.
All right, back at Red Bank Valley High School football field. Mike Kalinowski, Dave Cadis with you. Second quarter action brought to you by Hager Paving. No score in this one. It has been a defensive battle, and it's fourth and, a, and one. It's a full yard here for Central Clarion. Yeah, another big fourth dot play here. Red Bank had one heading into the end zone. And Clarion's going to have one here. Good first quarter play, Mike. Both teams sort of just filling each other out here, seeing what works. So here we go, fourth down and one. Ball to 25 of Red Bank Valley here by Central Clarion. Ferguson barking the signals. Ferguson now will come up. He's going to go under center. He's going to keep that football. He almost looked like he might have lost it for a second. He'll have the first down with the push. Yeah, it looked like he he just juggled it a little bit. Mike coming out of there. Uh, you know, you're seeing that an awful lot these days. Quarterbacks are back in the shotgun, and they just come up real quick, and that snap center uh, quarterback exchange isn't really good, but fell in his bread basket and just kept going. Picks up the first down. Yeah, he'll get a couple out of that when the ball down around the 28-yard line. So Central clearing the drive stays alive for them. It's one of these teams trying to, Central clearing here, trying to hit pay dirt as we are knotted at zero. Here's Ferguson. Sends his man in motion. He's going to look to throw. Firing. He's looking for Smale in the end zone, and it's going to be knocked away down there. Good defensive coverage by Red Bank in the end zone. It's tough to see the numbers. Yeah, I think that's number, Ashton Kale. Well, that was number five. Was I think five that was Magan Naughty. I think it was five. Okay. I think. You're saying? But five? it could be zero. I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell. Zero. I think it was All Ashton right, it was Kale. Kale. Zero yep, back there. there. So good coverage by Ashton Kale that time. I'll tell you what, I said that in pregame, Mike. You know, it's going to be a battle of your wide receivers with our defensive backs, and who's going to win? Who's going to be aggressive? Who's going to play the, the ball with a lot of confidence? And both teams so far doing a great job on defense. Second down, 10. Ball 23-yard line. Handed off here. That's a Nazer getting the carry, and he's going to take that for a good yardage inside the 20 down to about the 16-yard line. That's a gain of seven. So Noah Nazer touching the ball a couple times tonight so far. Two carries for six yards on the evening. So it's a third down in close to three here for Central Clarion. Football resting at the 16-yard line of Red Bank Valley, and they're going to go with that double sidecar. It'll be Nazer and Harrison. Here's Ferguson now working out of the shotgun. Sends Beck within motion. He's going to give that to Harrison. Harrison over the right side. Harrison's going to be stood up, and he's going to get the first down. I think he's going to get there. He needed the 13-yard line, and he's going to get that. He'll take it down to about the 12. Yeah, and the referee signals first down. Dave Blair and Noah Harrison bon bouncing it out to the right side a little bit, getting a little push from a couple of those other offensive linemen. So he picks up three. They're going to move the chains. First and 10, ball down around the 12. Fixing the chains over there a little bit. One of the clips apparently fell, fell off, and they've readjusted it. Going to continue with that double sidecar. They've been sending the tight end back with in motion. They're going to go right back to that play with Harrison over the right side, and Harrison gets a bit of a push. They saw something they liked, and they're getting some nice yards out of that as he's going to take that inside the 10-yard line down to about the 7. Yeah, that right side of the Clarion offensive line, number 55, Jake Smith pushing forward from his left guard position around that right side, and also number 54 doing a good job, Matt Alston, for the Wildcats. Picking up a few, not big gains, but just a little at a time. Second down and four, six-yard pickup on that first on that uh, down. Here's Ferguson keeping the football. Ferguson sliding through, spinning around. Ferguson's into the end zone for the touchdown. Seven yards for Ferguson. Well, Clarion touch first. If you take a look at the replay, look like the red. Some of the Red Bank guys were there. About three of them around him, but weren't able to bring him down in the backfield. Good running by Jace Ferguson. Picks up about four. So the Wildcats. Strike first. All right, 9.29 mark, quarter number two. 
Euchert's on for the extra point try. Got whistles. Got movement on this left side of the Wildcat line. I think uh, looks like Noah Nazer jumped here on that left-hand side, so we're going to move him back a little bit. In a low-scoring game like this, Mike, these, these are big penalties on special teams. Thomas Euchert has been pretty good this year, though. He's been very good. Holder is Smith. Good snap kick is on the way, and the kick by Euchert is up, and that is good. 7 nothing. Central Clarion leads Red Bank Valley, 9.29 to go. Here in quarter number two, we'll take a timeout. You're watching Carly Tower High School football on Explore Clarion at D9sports.com. What college is seen as and how college works is changing. Students are concerned with debt. Through scholarships and grants, I didn't pay anything last year. They even paid for my books. You, you, can't, you can't beat it. Like, why, why would I say no to that? All right, back here live as the teams come back onto the field for the kickoff. Kale and the Klauses will be back deep here for Red Bank. Be surprised if you could kicks to them, though. So 7 nothing Central Clarion. Ferguson, the seven-yard touchdown run. Yeah, let's see what Red Bank is going to do, how they are going to answer, because you're not going to keep them down either. They could score a lot of points. They scored 491 this year so far. Going to kick it, squirming it down the field, picked up by Klaus on the far side, and slipping there was uh, Mason Klaus, or Owen Klaus, excuse me, and that is where Red Bank will have it. Feels a little bit slick. <laughs> How you doing with those numbers, Mr. Kalinowski? Yeah. <laughs> the, the darker that it gets, the, the worse. The, the worse it gets. It's just impossible to see numbers. So you're trying to. to yeah, you can see them on TV just fine. Yeah. I know folks you're, watching. And you're trying to give all the Red hear. Bank kids as much love as you can, <laughs> tackled by this guy. But if you don't see the number, you can't say it. Yeah, we're just making stuff up at this point. <laughs> so let's see what they can do. The Bulldogs, let's see if they can match Clarion score. Wagner will work out of the shotgun. He's going to send a man in motion left to right. That's Roop. Ball handed off to Byers. Byers tries to find a seam, and he'll take it for maybe a yard is all. Second down here in nine. Ball out to right around the 29-yard line. Not a whole lot there for Byers that time. Nah, that's not his game. You get, he, he, you'd like to get him outside on a toss sweep, and he cuts it back. Uh, he's done a good job this year, averaging about 79 yards a football game. So let's see if they can get him going here. Send a man in motion again. That's Roop. Wagner looks to throw. Fires across the middle. Boy, he had Roop open in the middle. It was thrown behind him. Ferguson. Kind of kicking uh, himself, too, because he was coming that way. Yeah, him and Braylon Beck with both right there. And uh, Wagner's pass, just a little bit too much mustard on it that time. And Braylon, Be Braylon Beck with just hitting himself in the head like, oh, my gosh, he catches that. He, you know, is going to be close to walking into the end zone. So 10th grade quarterback, going to make some mistakes somewhere along the line like that. But all together... He's played a good, he's had a great year. There's no doubt about that. Third down and nine. Wagner looking to throw. Fires that football down the left side. He's got a man breaking free. It's caught. It is caught out there. That is George with the catch. And what a great catch. George shaking up a bit after the catch. But we have seen him make some fantastic catches this season. The one-hand catch that Brett caught earlier in the year, and that one right there. Look at that catch again. He's inside the 35-yard line. Just laid out a uh, great pass by Wagner that time and hit him right in stride. 23. So here we go. Wagner ready to go. In the shotgun, setting up here at uh, the 34-yard line of Central Clarion. Clarion leads 7-0, but now Red Bank Valley threatening as they're 
putting a nice drive together on that big pass play. And in motion again, Wagner finds George, caught. Finds him on the right side, good pickup. He's going to take that ball inside the 30, down to about the 26-yard line. It's a gain of close to eight. Well, make it seven. That's their go-to route, that quick slant. He went to it earlier in the game. It was incomplete, came back to it right there, and nice pickup of about seven right. yards. Good throw by Wagner that time. Going to pitch that to Roop this time. Roop's going to be hit and driven backwards. Oh, how about that big tackle that time by uh, Heinemann for Central Clarion. Yeah, just getting up there, read that really the whole way. Loss on the play of about no, close to four. Looks like about two, four, three. You pick uh, it. Closer to four. Okay. So third down here in long, third down in about six. Here's Wagner out of the shotgun. We expect four down territory out of the Bulldogs at this position of the field if they don't get it here. Wagner stepping up, firing across the middle. It is caught. And that is uh, Kale with the catch. He's going to take that ball down inside the 15-yard line, down to about the 13. Yeah, it looks like a pickup of around... Uh, about 18 on that one, Sounds I think. Sounds good. Somewhere like that, about 18. But, boy, Wagner just threw that right in there. He saw him clear. Ball sitting at the 13-yard line. Roop in motion. Wagner rolls to the right side, fires, finds. Roop juggles it. Roop spinning around. And he's going to finally be thrown out of bounds. That's Ferguson in there on the tackle. He's down near the five. That's a pickup of eight. Second down here in about two. Ball sitting at the five-yard line. Good pass again by Wagner. Patient, patient, patient. Saw Roop clear that time and put it right on the numbers, and Roop did the West. Here's Wagner again. Shotgun, Byler, sidecar right. Going to roll to the right side. Pitches it out to Byler. Byler's got room. Goes for that pylon. He's in the end zone for the touchdown for Red Bank Valley. Five-yard run. Well, it was that pitch pass. Yeah, a little pitch pass. So they both get credit for five yards on a play. Good play call by that offensive coordinator, Jason Kundick, for Red Bank. Boy, haven't seen that one, the Mike. We've had them three or four times this year. We haven't seen that play at all. Pulled that one out of the playbook, and Red Bank answers. House's kick is up, and that kick is good. We're tied. 6.19 to go here in quarter number two, Red Bank and Central Clarion 7-7. Seven, seven. You're watching Carly Tire High School Football on Explore Clarion at D9Sports.com. He's on the 30. He's on the 20. He's on the 10. It's a touchdown. There is nothing like football, the lights, the cheers of the crowd, and getting a chance to see our local athletes and kids give it all they've got. Come to a game. Support our local schools. Clarion County Community Bank, a better way to bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at clarionbank.com. All right, back at uh, Red Bank Valley High School football field. Quinn Smale back deep. Nice drive that time for Red Bank, Mike, and uh, big play on that series, the big pass to George from Braylon Wagner. He laid out and made a fantastic catch to pick up that first down and keep that drive going. So Red Bank comes back and answers. Here's the kickoff. Sported down the field. Wright is going to grab that football, but they're going to call him down. He had contact with the football and was down on the field, so they're going to mark him down at that point. Had just slipped up a little bit back there on special teams. and Smart thing, just fall on the football. I think he felt like he was in the NFL and get up and run with it, but <laughs> can't do that in high school, young man. 
Ball to the 21-yard line. That is where Central Clarion will have it. At their own 21, we're tied at 7. What a great ball game tonight. 6-16 to go here in quarter number 2 in this Hager paving second quarter. Yeah, it's everything we thought it was going to be. We're usually, when you see Red Bank and Central Clarion play, they usually have 45 points on the board by now, Mike. Well, and I'll tell you what, this is the, you know, these defenses are really good too, and I think certainly challenging in this contest tonight. Here's Ferguson, going to hand that uh, football off. Running with that football, I believe that was Nazer getting the carry, and he'll get good yardage out across 25 and up to the 27-yard line, picks up about six. Yeah, we saw no Nazer play last week a, a lot against St. Mary's, and it seemed like he turned his game up a little bit last week when we saw that game against uh, the Dutch. And hoping to get a little bit more out of him tonight, I'm sure, Coach Eagleton, keeping him in there. Second down about four. Ball resting at about the 28-yard line. Hands it on, and uh, that's uh, Ferguson keeping the football, and he's going to be driven to the right side. He will get some yardage. He's going to be brought down shy of the 30. Yeah, it looks like he's going to pick up about two. He's going to be short of that first down. So third down and still about two here for Central Clarion. That's a stout defensive line for Red Bank. Those kids play hard. They collapse. They, they do a good job tackling. Uh, they're well coached. Jace Ferguson just can't get anything going in the running game except for one big, long carry, that 16-yarder he had earlier in the game. So here we go. It is third down here in about two, a long two here for Central Clarion. Ferguson working with a double sidecar. Ferguson over the right side looking to run. Ferguson hit, driven backwards. He's not going to get there. Or are they going to say he does? They're going to say he does get that forward progress up across. Yeah, it looked like he got that last push, Mike, yep. from uh, Coleman Slater, one of the offensive linemen, just sort of reached back and advanced him a little <laughs> bit and the football. You can see it. I'll, I'll tell you what, it was banging in there all the way. He's going to have that first down. He'll pick up three. Ball is at about the 31, 32, about the 32-yard line is where it rests. Ball to 32. Again, they'll stay with that double sidecar. Burford is the wide receiver. Send Beckwith in motion. Ferguson keeps it. Here's Ferguson on the ground. Ferguson high stepping it, trying to turn the corner, and he'll be hit. He'll be dropped. He will get a couple yards out of it. Did the ball come out at the end? Everyone's pointing. Now we're looking to the side, Judge. The white hat is signaling he was down. Yep. All right, let's take a look. Uh, and I think he was down. I think that's a good call by the official that time. That's a, a pickup from Ferguson of about two they'll give him. Wow. That's tough to see in front of where we are. Yeah, a couple yards for him. Second down here, a long eight. Ball to 30, or 35-yard line. Yeah, we had the replay, and again, they don't have that down on the field, and it looked like it, he was down by contact. Earlier, I thought he probably lost the ball. Here's Ferguson pumping, firing, and coming back for that football. The catch is made by Burford. So that is out near the four, about the 39-yard line. It's a gain of about seven. Burford did a nice job to come back and just make sure he caught that football to get those yards. Well, he's going to pick up seven on the play. It'll bring up a third down and three. And <laughs> Both quarterbacks, just impressive. I mean, but both have unbelievably strong arms on tonight. And that's a tough throw all the way from this left-hand side across the hash to the other hash mark. That's a heck of a throw. Third and three. Here's Smale making the catch. Smale with the spin move. Smale's going to have the first down, though. They only needed three. He's going to gain four, and they're going to move the chains. As Smale will take it out to the 44-yard line. So, Central Clarion, new set of downs here. We're tied at 7, 240 to go here in this quarter. Boy, this game moving right along as these two teams lock in horns. Yeah, good throw that time. Good catch by Smale. Haven't gone to him too much here, Mike, in the last few games. Dawson Smale open and good throw. Twins again on each side here for... Uh, Ferguson, Ferguson, 
Dumps it off. It is caught. 45, and Smith will have the first down as he leans forward. Nice job by Smith. He'll pick up 11. Yeah, Smith. just a lot of clear and a lot of double crisscrossing going across that backside. Linebackers trying to stay with it, and Tommy Smith got himself open, and Jace Ferguson was able to pick him up through that mess and all those crisscrosses for a big first down. And first down's brought to you by uh, Nick's Auto Body. Here we go. Ferguson with the empty backfield. Goes five wide. Trips right. Twins left. Pocket collapsing. Fires across the middle of the field, and it is incomplete. Flag's going to be thrown in. They're going to call that penalty on George as he ran into 17, ran into 17. Burford. Yeah, watching that a little bit. I'm not sure if we have a replay on that or not, but I, I think both guys just were coming across and hit each other. Mike, you see the replay yeah, better than I do. take a look here. They're going to call that pass interference. Let's see if Tyler can pull that up. Nope. Okay. So uh, we don't have the replay, but <clears throat> I thought that was a, a, a decent enough call. Yeah, and you know what? I was looking at uh, – Coach Gold on the sidelines. He didn't argue that much. So, so looked like incidental contact to me coming across. I, that's what I'll, that's what it looked like to right. me. But, you know, but guess what? The guy in a black hat and a white hat make all the calls down here. We don't <laughs> up here. Ball's at the 29-yard line now for Central Clarion. First down after the pass interference. Ferguson to the right side. Ferguson firing the ball again. Caught by Smith. First down. Smith. Getting stood up and driven out of bounds, but Smith with the first down inside the 15-yard line. Pick up of a run. We're thinking to mark him about the eight. Uh, about it's a gain of 16. He's down at the 14, yeah. Looked like it was the same play they ran on this side of the field, Mike, uh, a few mm -hmm. plays ago to Tommy Smith. That's been successful for the Wildcats tonight. Clock rolling here, a minute 23 to go here in the quarter. 7-7 seven, seven tie. Ferguson again with the empty backfield. And we have a timeout taken by Red Bank Valley here. They're going to talk things over. We have a minute 13 to go here in the quarter. It's a Hager paving second quarter. We'll keep it right here. I'll tell you what, Dave, this game has been everything that the folks, uh, I think, uh, th thought it would be except for points. Yes. You know, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think people realize how good these defenses are. Yeah. Uh, that's the big thing. Like we said earlier in the game, Mike, you know, Clarion only given up 67 points on the year to their opponents, and Red Bank only given up 108. Uh, and, you know, those points are, are some of those give, up, give ups are late in the third quarter or in the fourth quarter when you got your third string guys in there, basically. So uh, statistics are a little deceiving, but both teams absolutely great defenses. And I, I, I've enjoyed to see Red, watching Red Bank play a bunch of times this year and also Central Clarion. And we just couldn't wait for this game, and it's given everything that we thought it was going to be uh, here in the first half. Sure has. Here we go. Minute 13 to go here in the first half. Central Clarion with a first and 10, the ball resting at the Red Bank 14-yard line. Well, you have some selections here if you're Clarion. you got a lot of time. you got two timeouts. Left on the clock here before the end of the first half. So let's see what Coach Eggleton can come up with here. Ferguson's going to follow Beckwith. Ferguson pushing people out of the way. High step in it, and he's inside the five. A first down all the way down to around the two-yard line. That's a gain of 12 for him. First and goal here for Central Clarion. Well, that's a good way to put it, Mike. High stepping, looking for the open area and just finding it left, right, left, right and fell just short of that goal line. Ball right around the two. See what Central Clarion does here. They're going to keep Beckwith in the backfield. Wouldn't be surprised if they send Ferguson behind him. Now they're going to bring Beckwith up to the line of scrimmage. And also uh, Ferguson, too. He's going to take the snap. Ferguson pushes to the right side. Ferguson's going to be brought up short of the, the goal line. He'll get down near the one. Good defensive play there by Red Bank. Can't see that number, Mike. He's so far away. Well, I'll tell you, it is now 24 seconds to go here in the quarter. The ball sits at the Red Bank one-yard line. 7-7 tie. 
Central Clarion has it, second and goal from the one now. I think it's Klaus. I followed him all the way across the field to Coach Gold where the timeout is taking <laughs> place, and he finally turned for me. So Mason Klaus down there, number 12, good job on that tackle. And it's tough to bring Jace Ferguson down, but Klaus was able to keep that defense alive and keep him out of that, keep him out of that end zone. So here we go, ball sitting at the one-yard line. Clarion comes out of their huddle first onto the football field. 24 seconds to go here in the half. Can Central Clarion take the lead? Can Red Bank turn them away here? They're going to go <clears throat> with everybody in the backfield. Nazer, Beckwith, and Harrison. Here's Ferguson under center. Look, He might just stick his nose and go in. Here's Ferguson. Going to hand that football off. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown, I believe. The ball was handed to Beckwith. I think it was Braylon Beckwith, number 30. Yep. 30 with the football. There we go. So the touchdown for Central Clarion. They take the lead with 20 seconds. Well, you don't often see Braylon Beckwith with the football, so i got to create a new category on my stat <laughs> sheet here, basically. So Braylon Beckwith with a two-yard touchdown run. Tom Euchard on to attempt the extra point. Here's the kick on the way, and it's good. 14-7, Central Clarion scoring with just 20 seconds to go here in the quarter. The yard plunge for Beckwith, and we'll break. You're watching Carly Tire High School Football right here on Explore Clarion at D9Sports.com. Want to cut your cooling costs this summer? With a highly efficient air conditioning system, you can save up to 50% in energy costs while enjoying more consistent temperatures throughout your home. Call Lutens Plumbing, Heating, and AC at 814-226-8695 to schedule a free evaluation of your system and learn how you can move up to a new level of comfort and efficiency this summer. All right, getting set for kickoff. Central Clarion, back with the one-yard touchdown run. 14-7 is the score, Central Clarion leading. Battle of heavyweights. I'll tell you what, it sure is tonight. The concession stand's probably running out of food, Mike. There's so <laughs> many people here. Kick off by Euchre. He's just going to squirt it down the field, taken by one of the upmen there. And I think that was, was that Nicewanger, one of the upmen, number 10? 10, it looked like a 10 to me. Looked right. like we'll Caden Nicewanger. That's who we're going to give it to. Picking it up. 16 seconds. We'll see if Red Bank tries to make something happen here in this time or if they're going to be content to go in we will see you have to be careful well they're so explosive oh, we've seen it many mm -hmm. times all of a sudden you, you stick one you know Kale out there or George out there or Klaus out there and Wagner able to flip it down the field about 45 yards and score quickly that's one thing about the Red Bank Valley offense they can score like right now all the time Klaus is going to go out to the left. It looks like they're going to do something because there's nobody behind Wagner. And there's George. Probably going to try to run something. Red Bank has two timeouts remaining. Yeah, they're going to go five wide here with the empty backfield. Too much time coming off the field. Delay game. Yeah, they'll back them up five yards. At this point, not too detrimental, but you're going to get a player two. Wagner will work with the same setup, five wide. Ball comes back, and to hand that football off. And a flag on the play. I think that was Kale that came back to take this, the handoff. That's who it was. Yeah, it was Kale. Yeah, he'll be dropped for a loss, but we'll see what the call is here. Personal foul, face mask against the defense. Mm. <clears throat> so 10 seconds, 10.9. 10 Timeout's going to be taken by Red Bank here. Again, we'll hold with uh, 10 seconds as they mark off the penalty, and they're going to come over and talk. Again, it's not an automatic first down, so it'll be a, what, a first down at about yeah. six. Yeah, and the ball's, ball's going to rest right there about the 37-yard line. You only have 10 seconds, well, 10.9, Mike, to work with. So mm -hmm. 
you know, we've seen a lot of colleges that just try to throw real quick, you know, 10 yard out, get the ball up close to the 50 yard line and then try to throw a Hail Mary, try to pick up at least 12 yards if you possibly could. And I'm sure Central Clarion's gonna play off of these receivers. But the other thing you gotta keep in mind, you got Owen Klaus, the kicker. You can throw one down here about 25 yards, you might set him up for a field goal, a long field goal attempt. My money would be on him. So Kale and Mason Klaus will be out to the left, trips off to the right side. Here's Wagner in the shotgun, 10.9 seconds to go here in the first half, a seven point lead for Central Clarion. First down on about six here for Red Bank. Kale comes into the backfield here with uh, Wagner. Ball snap back to Wagner, fires that football and it is caught on the left side and it is actually a loss on the catch that time. That was caught by Klaus over there, Mason Klaus with 3.3 seconds. And that's the end of the first half. So we will go into halftime with Central Clarion leading here by a score of 14 to 7. We'll take a break and we'll come back. We'll get some bands for you and we'll get you set up from first half stats and all that good stuff. And you're watching Carly Tire High School Football right here on Explore Clarion at D9Sports.com. Hey, Julie, nice deck. Did you get that at Tio Nesta Builder Supply? It's Tio Nesta Builder Supply, and yes, Dave, I did. Wonder if they sell siding and roofing at Tio Nesta Builder Supply. It's Tio Nesta, and yes, Tio Nesta Builder Supply has that too. Come on, Dave, you've never been there? They have two showrooms for anything home improvement. Mom got a custom kitchen there. Bill down the street got the materials for his garage. They have this awesome website, www.tianestabuilders.us. You can buy online. They really have everything for the home. Wow, I'm heading over to Tio Nesta. <laughs> I know, I know, Tio Nesta Builders. Tio Nesta Builders Supply Home Improvement Center. Family owned and operated since 1958 with locations in Tyanesta and Shippenville. That sounds good. I'll check them out online at tyanestabuilders.us. Looking for a new Bobcat tractor? Northeastern Equipment Sales and Rentals has inventory on the lot, ready to be loaded up so you can get to work on tough jobs. Check out Bobcat of Clarion at 1214 East Main Street in Clarion. Located at 511 Main Street in Shippenville, All-American Awards and Engraving is expanding to provide even better customer service with that personal small town feel. From embroidery to engraving to screen printing to personalized gifts, All-American Awards and Engraving is ready to help you make your organization, business, school team, or event stand out with All-American Awards and Engraving's quality promotional products. Visit their showroom for apparel, trophy, and awards ideas at 511 Main Street or visit their website at allamericanhq.com. Brookville Equipment's always been well known in the community as a great local employer. Very family oriented company. Brookville has a really great benefits plan here. We're pretty diverse in what we do from mining to streetcars to locomotives. We're helping the infrastructure of the country medical insurance, dental, vision, competitive wages, paid time off. It's an opportunity. It's something that you can enjoy doing. And you can apply right through our website. Clarion Forest VNA believes the emotional and physical well-being of a patient is enhanced by the patient receiving care in the familiar surroundings of home. Their staff of caring professionals work closely with physicians to administer quality care to meet the needs of each individual. As a pioneer in home health care in Clarion and Forest County, Clarion Forest VNA continue to grow to meet the community's need for in-home care, offering many different services and programs to meet the patient's need. Clarion Forest VNA, located at 271 Perkins Road in Clarion. Call us toll free at 1 800 262 2118. 
All right, back here at Red Bank Valley. It is the Heater Lumber Halftime Show, 14-7. Central Clarion leads Red Bank here at the half. Let's give the bands a listen. Here's Central Clarion. Getting the crowd all fired up here at halftime. Dan Central Clarion, actually the best moonwalker in high school, Dave Cadis. Yeah. You got my mic turned off so I can't respond That's right, to I was anything trying. like that. Good no, no, we never moonwalk. We like the Michael Jackson deal, though. Well, here we got Central Clarion. Let's give one more listen here, Central Clarion March Band. Central Clarion Marching Band while Red Bank comes on to the football field. We'll take a look at the Laurel Eye Clinic stats coming up here with Dave Kittis. He's talking Larry Weiser behind us here and uh, keeping us honest here tonight. And we'll get Dave on here momentarily and then we'll give the Red Bank Valley Marching Band a listen. 
And uh, Dave, those Laurel Eye Clinic stats, how do they stack up here in this one here tonight? Oh, i got to get my glasses, Mike. Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, Larry was talking to you. He was I keeping know. you busy. Coach Weiser, Hall of Famer, talking a little bit here up in the press box. It's amazing the big shots you run into up here, let me tell you. For Red Bank, um, Wagner or Byers on the evening running the football, five carries for seven yards. You talk about a great defense. They shut him down a good bit. Wagner had two carries for seven yards on the night. Wagner also throwing the ball. Unofficial stats, 7 for 12 for about 106 yards out there tonight. And George leading receiver for Red Bank, three receptions for 57 yards on the evening. For Ferguson, uh, 12 carries for 57 yards. Noah Harrison, three carries for five yards. And Noah Nazer, three carries for 12 yards. Ferguson was 10 for 13 for 118 yards and one interception on the night. The leading receiver for Clarion Brady Quinn with three receptions for 52 yards. All right, there we go. Those are your stats brought to you by the Laurel Lake Clinic. Let's give a listen to the Red Bank Valley marching band now. Here's the Bulldog Band. Zockrell Motor Truck Sales in Clarion is an international Diamond Ed certified service department. As one of only 276 such shops in all of North America, you can be sure that when your medium or heavy duty truck needs service, the job will be done correctly at Zockrell Motors. Our work is guaranteed nationwide at any international truck dealer and our parts and service prices can be beaten. Our technicians are factory trained and factory certified. Don't trust a shop that just thinks that they can make repairs. Come to Zockrell Motors Diamond Edge Certified Service Department. If it's maintenance you need, click ZockrellMotors.com or call us for a quote on those jobs too. Our prices are great. Best of all, you know the repair is done right and it's guaranteed. Get your truck service work done at Zockrell Motor Truck Sales, two miles north of exit 64 Interstate 80 in Clarion. who wants to make a difference? Do you want to help children and families who are struggling with serious behavioral problems? MHY Family Services is looking for therapists to join our new multi-systemic therapy psychiatric team. Multi-systemic therapy psychiatric is an evidence-based in-home intensive treatment approach that addresses the multiple factors that contribute to a child's behavioral problems. With this treatment, you can help children and families change their lives for the better. We are looking for passionate therapists to join our team. Apply now and become a part of the supportive and dynamic culture at MHY Family Services.
All right, back here at Red Bank Valley. Let's give one more listen to this number by the Red Bank Valley Marching Band. We'll continue here at the Heater Lumber Halftime Show, 14-7 Central Clarion Leeds here at the half. go the Red Bank Valley marching band I love the skyfall you like that oh I like the movie and they I, this is like the fifth time <laughs> I've sent, heard this song that they, they do a great job that's a great job I love skyfall all right uh, back here too want to give a big hello to we got uh, Michael viewing in from Colorado w tuning in to watch the Beckwith brothers so we got folks from all over the country tuning into the broadcast here tonight and uh, we do want to thank them for that. Hopefully they're enjoying just as much as we are. Quick Zocker Motors updates for you. 28-15 Keystone is leading Montauk, Carn City up on Mount Union 12-0. Those nearing halftime as well. And uh, both of those teams looking to try to get some wins to get into the playoffs. We'll see Keystone making the decision. I think Carn City had to win the game tonight to get into the playoffs. That's what I heard. I think Mike Kilroy said that earlier uh, in the week. So looks like they're doing what they need to do. Well, uh, that uh, is certainly what they will want and need to do. We'll see if they can continue to hold on to that lead. Uh, we're just a few minutes away. Why don't we take a look at the second half, Mr. Cadis, and your Cadis' keys to the second half. Um, boy, I'll tell you what, I don't think you really need to change a whole lot. I think you nailed it right on the head. And these teams have just went nose-to-nose, -nose, played very well in the first half. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed watching this. the wide receiver cornerback battles here all night long uh, with both teams Showing some great coverage and some guys running great routes. Uh, Braylon Wagner able to throw a couple of those slam patterns and connect. And that, that catch by George on that far side, uh, spectacular. Just laid out completely and hauled that in. And on the clarion side of the ledger, Tommy Smith making a couple big catches there. They tried to go to Burford a couple times. And Ashton Kale able to shut him down uh back deep so it's been a battle all the wide outs and who's actually in quarterbacks who's actually gonna man up play aggressively and go from there as far as the uh offensive and defensive line push <laughs> they're just battling there mike i don't think anybody's got an advantage offensively uh you know i think that everybody's just standing up now one of the big adjustments the clarion came into the game what they're standing up all those down defensive linemen they're all standing up and watching uh, Wagner and where that ball, that football goes and, and going to that side. So you might look for a little misdirection here in the second half and see what Red Bank has. All right, again, they we're in the Heater Lumber Halftime Show, and those uh, keys are brought to you by Kale's Kitchen with Mr. Katis. <laughs> all kind of Ks, man. Yeah, That's all kind it. of Ks. Scoring summary from the first half, it is brought to you by uh, Gatesman Auto Body. No scoring in the first quarter at the 929 mark. Central Clarion got on the board first. It was Ferguson, the seven yard touchdown run. Euchard's extra point was good, 7 0. Red Bank would answer to tie things up. 619 mark, quarter number two was Wagner uh, going to uh, Byler, five yards for the touchdown, that little uh, flip pass. And uh, Klaus's kick was good, 7 7. We were tied at that point, but Central Clarion would take it down to the one yard line with 20 seconds left. And they would go with Beckwith, the one-yard touchdown run. Euchard's kick good, 14-7 is where we are here at halftime. 
And uh, we're just about a minute away from the start of this second half. I was looking to see. I don't see Red Bank back out here yet, are they? No, it's been a long halftime speech, and then the referees aren't even out yet. I was looking for those guys. Yeah, they're, they're moving. It's under a minute. And I don't know if they're going to add any more time or not on here. I don't think so. Here come the water dudes across the field. Yeah, you got to have the water guys. Look at that. Boy, we need to picture that. That's a good sprint. That's Look a at good that. Sprint. The water he's guppies. at the 20, 25 yard line. Now he's tuckering out. I know. He's up to the 30. The water 31, dudes. 31, 32 yard line, and then out of bounds. It's going to slow down. So Clarion's on the field. <clears throat> and they're going to stretch out a little bit. It's a nice little walk from the field to the locker room here at Red Bank Valley. Tell you what, the field has held up well, too. We had that shower before the game. Um, and it came down pretty good for a little while, but uh, really the field has held up um, in this one. And it has been a battle on in the trenches in this one. Central Clarion will get the football to start the second half. Red Bank won the toss, decided to take it first. So Red Bank will come out here. And they're going to give them about three minutes to warm up. Why don't we take a quick time out here? We'll pause this one or two. Catch your breath. Come back. Third quarter action on the way. That'll wrap up the Heater Lumber Halftime Show. And 14-7 here at halftime. We're back with third quarter coming up. It's Carly Tire High School Football at Explore Clarion D9Sports.com. With so much to protect each day, Eric Schick Insurance and Financial Services is here to help you find the right coverage that fits your life. Call 814-275-2210 to learn more. We are bringing college to rural Pennsylvania. We're helping people that didn't have a college option before. And the way we do that is through dedicated faculty and student services team and through technology so that people that didn't have that option before now have that option. Back at Red Bank Valley High School football field. Getting set for third quarter action as Central Clarion leads here by a score of 14 to 7. The Wildcats will get the ball to start quarter number three. Third quarter sponsor is Zacharol Motors. Of course, I always say when you get over there, Pat's all right, but you want to talk to Steve. He's the nice guy. <laughs> Pat's here tonight, so I don't have to worry about him getting upset. He was in a rainstorm last week at, yeah. over in. That's CL. Oh, he's out there. He's watching his son touch down Billy Kale, is what they nicknamed him. So we will see Mr. Cadis. Yeah. Central Clarion coming out with the football first. Boy, they would like nothing more than to go up by two scores on Red Bank. But, boy, this Red Bank defense has been good. Yeah, it has been. And uh, this will be a big possession here. If Red Bank can shut them down, get the ball back, tie the football game up. And we'll see what happens. But like you said, Mike, you've been saying it all night. Great defenses tonight. We're used to taking a look at that scoreboard here in the second half and saying, hey, you know, mercy rule. We got 35 points. The mercy rule's on. But that isn't going to happen tonight. Nope. We think it's a pretty safe bet. Quinn and Wright are back deep. Klaus will get set to kick things off here for Red Bank Valley.
Boy, the crowd hasn't gone anywhere. This is a crowd, too. You hear them get excited on the plays, but quiet. They're, they are intent. They are really watching this football game. I think everybody's a little nervous. You want to get out of this game with a win. You don't want to be on the other side. So, Wright's going to take it back at about the 5, 10, 15. Makes a cut at the 20. Big hole. 25. Hit. And finally spun down. But a nice return by Wright. He's going to bring it out to about the 31-yard line. Yeah, good special teams play by the Bulldogs. I'll find it, Mike. I saw a number. It's Brandon Ross who yep. made that tackle on special teams. Just come over and just basically destroying right on that tackle, throwing him. Got a good roll out of him after he brought him down. Ferguson will jump back into the shotgun formation. Going to keep that football over the right side, looking to run. Ferguson, boy, lean forward. Then you can just see him get jerked backwards, and he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. A lot of different guys in there on the tackle. We was uh, Klinger in there, uh, Pleiter in there for Red Bank Valley. Yeah, no gain for Ferguson on that, that play. Jason now carried the football. 13 times on the evening. So second down and 10 here for the Wildcats of Central Clarion. From their own 31-yard line, Ferguson will send the man in motion. Ferguson looking to throw. Ferguson pocket collapsing, flag on the play. Ferguson firing as deep as he can downfield. There's Burford, and it is incomplete. Burford almost came up with a great catch on the coverage. was George that time. George doing a nice job to help break it up, but I think we might see a hold coming up here against Central Clarion. Question is, yeah. with that incompletion, do you take it or not? Yeah, looking over to the Red Bank sidelines, looking for an answer. I think they're going to take it. Yeah, I think they will too. That right side of the Clarion offensive line, someone over there got caught. Ferguson had a lot of time to throw that football. That's probably one reason, Mike, since they were holding. Yep. So Boy, both quarterbacks could just fire that ball down the field. So second down and 20 would have been a third and 10. So second down and 20. Wind's starting to pick up here at Bulldog Stadium. Ferguson all alone in the backfield. They're going to go five wide. Ferguson takes the snap. Ferguson rolling to this left side. Ferguson looking deep. He's got a man breaking free, and it's incomplete. Just overshot his intended receiver. That was Cohen Kemmer. Yeah, just a little bit too much on that that one that time. Cohen Kemmer down there. Yeah, Kemmer got behind Byler by a couple steps. Yeah, Drew Byers back there, and Kemmer got by him, like Mike said. And, boy, just a little bit less on that. And Cohen Kemmer would have run right underneath it. But good defense. By Red Bank. That'll bring up a third down. Yeah, third and 20 here now for Central Clarion. And we said that Mike, if Red Bank could come out and stop them on their first series, that's a big win for Red Bank. And they got him in a third and long situation. Here's Ferguson dropping back, looking to throw again. Lots of time. Ferguson firing, finding Burford, caught. Burford first down across midfield, all the way down to the 43-yard line of Red Bank Valley. Boy, nice pass by Jace Ferguson, and, Mace, and Burford just going up to grab it out of the air at the high point, pulls it in, slams onto the, the turf. So big play. 29 yards on the pass play. It's all the way down to the 42-yard line. I think I say officially, yeah, right there at the 42. Wow, what a catch. Mason Burford's third reception on the evening, and that was his best one right there. That was a big third down play for Clarion. Yeah, it was third and 20. Handed off Harrison over the right side. Harrison, he's going to get a few yards. He'll take it right down to about the 39-yard line. Picks up about two, close to three. So second down here in eight. If you go back to that Mason Burford catch, too, there was good coverage on him, Mike, too. It's just Mason Burford, just tall, lanky kid going up and grabbing that football and pulling it down. But 
Red Bank on good coverage that time, but Mason Burford able to win that battle. Second down and eight, ball resting just inside the 40-yard line on the Red Bank side of the football field. Ferguson again handing it off. Here's Nazer looking for room on the left side. Nazer's going to be tripped up, and Nazer's going to be dropped at the line of scrimmage. He may even lose about a half a yard back near the 40. Yeah, right. he took a little, a really good lick, too, and, and Noah Nazer coming up a little bit. A little bit limpy there, and he's going to come out of the football game. Yeah, Adams is over there. Byler was over there. Klaus. Wholesale changes here for Central Clarion. Yeah, Brandon Ross and Caden Adams, just monsters on that defense for Red Bank. Third down and eight. Here's Ferguson. Ferguson firing the ball. There's Smith, and it is. Is it caught? It is incomplete. Boy, Smith made a valiant attempt to try to adjust to that ball. So fourth down, and I imagine, boy, I don't know. You're up by seven. I'd be tempted to punt here. Good. Don't ask me what I would do, okay? What would I'd you be, do? I don't, I'm not, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I would punt. I'm glad I'm not down there anymore. It's fourth down and eight, and... Well, they got the ball. Where are we at? On the 40. Yeah, here's the smell. He, he is the punter. I'll change my mind. I'd go for it. All right. Well, we'll see. They may fake out of this, too. They have before. They need eight yards. It's at the 40-yard line. Here's Smale. Smale rolling to the right side. They're going to fake. There is a flag on the play, though. Smale, it now punts the football. Oh, uh, we're going to have a big mess here. We yeah, punted there's... the football. We got a flag. We got guys <laughs> downfield. I'm, well, let's uh, take a look at this replay because it was crazy. I'm glad Dave Blair with about 185 yards of officiating <laughs> experience is going to work this one out. Oh, you saw everything there. So we got every official, every official together except for for Barry Abbott down here. Yep. Who's Barry's like, yeah, trying to work, figure out where the ball is <laughs> going to be placed. So, so we're going to get everybody's opinion and let's find out what happened here. They're going to wave off the flag. Okay. And would it be the result of the punt? It's going to be first down Red Bank. It would be the result of the punt. Okay. Well, and that was shorter than I thought it was yeah. going to be. Well, Mr. Abbott probably realized that they were going to wave the flag. He goes, I'm not going to walk all the walk, way over why there. Why should I walk all the way out there? And those guys are going to make the decision <laughs> anyways, basically. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Ball's back at the 25-yard line, first and 10 here for Red Bank Valley. So the bottom line is, Mike, Red Bank stopped Clarion on the first possession of the second half. That's a big, big play for Red Bank. Wagner will work out of the shotgun here. Byler in the backfield with them. For their own 25-14-7. You are right. Big stop that time by Red Bank. Wagner fires the football. Boy, that ball came up short. Roop was open, but the ball was thrown into the dirt that time. Yeah, I haven't seen too many of those this year from Wagner. See, Wagner kind of shaking his head, knew that one. Looks like it might have slipped out of his hand. Yeah, just haven't <clears throat> seen one of those this year out of him after doing about four Red Bank games this year. So I'm sure he'd like to have that one back. Second down and 10 from their own 25 here for the Bulldogs. Second half action is Aqua Motors third quarter. Wagner again looking to throw, fires that football. It is caught on the far side. And coming up with the catch is uh, Mason Klaus. And that's a gain of about eight yards. That sets up a third down and a two here. Ball out at the 33-yard line. Nice catch by Klaus because Mason Burford was all over him that time. So he's going to pick up pick up about what, eight, eight, Mike? Yep. Ball at the 33s. Third down here and two for Red Bank. As they try to keep their drive alive here, their opening drive of this third quarter. Klaus went in motion. Wagner looking to throw. Fires the football. Wide open on the far side. It is caught. And running with that football, that is Kale. Kale's going to go all the way down the left side, and he's going to go into the end zone for the touchdown. 69 yards for the score. Oh, what a pass play. No one over on Kale. Big, big defensive mistake by Central Clarion, and Mike will show you the replay here. I think he's got no coverage by anybody in the on the corner. Here it is. Wide Bam. open. Yep, nobody there. 
Ferguson tried to catch up. 69 yards, or 67 yards. As it went from the 33. And the kick by Klaus is good. 7.57 to go here in quarter number three. We're tied at 14 at Red Bank Valley. You're watching Carly Tire High School Football on Explore Clary and D9Sports.com. One of the biggest risks to your future could be running out of money during a longer than expected retirement. Many people have not yet taken the time to determine if they will have enough assets to last throughout retirement. Our retirement income evaluator can help you develop a roadmap and actual recommendations. To learn more, stop by our office located at 162 South 2nd Avenue in Clarion. Give us a call at 223-9990 or visit JennyClarion.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC, member NYSE, FINRA, and SIP. All right, back here. Hear the crowd in the background cheering on the Bulldogs as they. Boy, Mike, give a lot of credit to Braylon Wagner that time. Kale's wide open out there, and I'm sure Kale looked up, tried to get his attention over there, and <laughs> luckily, you know, Braylon Wagner looked over there and said, there's no white shirt over there. What You know, and, and he just checked off the play and hit him about 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, and with all that speed, Nash and Kale just took off 67, 60, 68 yards, 69 yards down the field. So uh, good little pitch and catch that time. Wright and Quinn are going to be the deep men here for Central Clarion. there would be a lot of discussion over on that Clarion sideline who had responsibility for that. But Red Bank ties it up. Here's the kickoff by Klaus. Quinn will come. He's going to let it bounce. It's going to be picked up by Quinn. And Quinn over the right side. Nice return back out across right near the 30-yard line. It's about a 20-yard return for him. So Central Clarion with the football. It's tied at 14 here. This has been everything that uh, folks have thought. Slugfest. Yeah. What can you do? We're going to do it a little bit better. Of course, as you said it earlier, folks are used to a lot of points out of these teams. And tonight, this just shows you what two good teams – Lock and horns do, and it's good defense. It's good offense. It's just good special sure teams. Both yeah. kickers, Euchard and Klaus, <laughs> kicking both extra points. We got people punting the football. So yep, it's been a good display of football tonight. The fans should be happy. They got their money's worth. And a penalty is going to be thrown here against Central Clary, and another mistake by the Wildcats. That's two men in motion that time. Yeah, that's uh, that's something you don't see too much either. Two men going in motion. So that's, go ahead. Well, I was going to say up north, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, up north, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, over the border with a passport, that's fine. You're good. <laughs> good to go. Back up Central Clarion. Five yards here on the procedure penalty. Sets up a first and 15 now. Ball back at the 25-yard line. Ferguson will work in the shotgun. It's got Dawson Smell out here, one-on-one. -on -one. Ferguson, he's looking that way, looking for Smell. Caught by Smell. Smell can make people miss, and he's finally going to be brought down. That ball came out at the end. You're going to call him down. It's a first down. They needed 15. He's going to get 16. Yeah, I could see that right off the bat, Mike. I saw Dawson Smell, and they played off on him a little bit, and then uh, Jace Ferguson able to – Hit that receiver out here, Dawson Smale. Yeah, you can see as he hit the ground is when the ball came out on that replay. Getting let the folks get fired up, but uh, we have the you know the the great access to that replay, but folks out there don't. Quinn in motion. Ferguson's going to keep it. Here's Ferguson fighting his way, and he's going to be hit and pushed backwards. He'll get positive yards. From about the 41 up to about the 43-yard line. Give him two, second down here at eight. Yeah, whole, like I said, a whole host of Red Bank Valley guys in on that tackle that time. But Caden Adams coming off on the bottom of that pile for the Bulldogs, bringing Ferguson down. Tough runner, man. Just keeps his feet going, moves forward north and south. Good tackle by Adams that time. 
Looking to throw. Ferguson. Ferguson fires that football. It is caught. That is a Smith. First down across midfield and down to the 42-yard line of Red Bank Valley. That'll be about a 15-yard pickup. They're going to move the chains. <clears throat> and that was a pretty good catch by Tommy Smith, too. He laid out once again. Made that reception. Big play. You need big plays from your players in games like this, and that was a big play by Tommy Smith. Stays down at the 43-yard line. First and 10 here for Central Clarion. First downs again brought to you by uh, Nick's Auto Body. And, Mike, those guys on Clarion's uh, offensive line up there led by Jimmy Kerr doing a pretty good job of giving Jace Ferguson some time to throw that football. Kemmer goes in motion. Ferguson looking to throw. Ferguson rolling to the right side. Ferguson tries to turn the corner, and he's going to tiptoe out of bounds. He will get some yards. Picks up about maybe six. He's inside the 40 at about the 37-yard line. Just picks up about six yards on the play. Fans not too happy. Thought there was a holding play, a holding penalty on the Clarion left side of their <clears throat> offensive line. So it's a second down here in about four. So second and four and a flag. Too many guys in the huddle, basically. Noah Harrison, they had 12 guys in the huddle. Yep, there you go. Back them up five. And Noah Harrison... Isn't a really, he's a diminutive one. Doesn't have a lot of height, so he tried to sneak off the field, <laughs> and they found him. Number two, Dave Blair, the referee, wasn't going to let that go. Threw the flag on him, so they're going to push them back five yards. So second down and nine now on that penalty. Penalty's brought to you by Red Bank Chevrolet. 5.36 to go here in the third. We're tied at 14. Ball handed off on that sweep from the right side. Running with that football, that is Quinn. Or that, yeah, breaking tackles, and he's going to take it all the way for the first down. What a run by Quinn down to the 25-yard line. That's a gain of 18 yards. Yeah, that is a good gain. And I'll tell you what, number 54 was down there leading the way. Matt Alston leveled one of the Red Bank Valley guys, and Quinn was able to go, and then 54 decided, I'm going to go after another guy down there. So, Good blocking by Matt Alston and a good run by Brady Quinn. First and 10, the ball at the 25-yard line of Red Bank Valley. Central Clarion driving here in a tie ball game. Empty backfield. Quinn's going to come back and join Ferguson. Ferguson's going to keep it, comes left side. Ferguson lowers the shoulder, and he'll get down close to the 21. He'll get about four. Yeah, about four or five. A little mix-up on defense. Coach Gold putting another guy in there. Somebody's going to come out and get an earful here, and I think it's going to be number 77. Going to come off the field. Apparently they wanted a, another defensive back into the football game and take out a lineman. It's a substitution problem on that Red Bank bench that time. I think they got it straightened out now. Second down and six. Ball sitting at the 21-yard line here for Central Clarion. They're trying to regain the lead here on Red Bank Valley. Harrison will switch side, sidecar left. Ferguson's going to follow him. Ferguson takes it forward. He gets to about the 15-yard line. It is close to first down yardage. Yeah, I think they're going to give it to him, Mike. He got that last little push there. And I watched the side <coughs> judge, the side official on that far side, Tell those guys right off the bat to move those chains. So he gets the six yards. They're in the Dubrook red zone now. Ball sitting at the 15-yard line. Fog turning here in quarter number three. It's been a good one here at Red Bank Valley tonight. Good tune-up, too, for both of these teams as they go into the playoffs. Yeah, I have a pretty good idea. Probably maybe later tonight or tomorrow morning where everybody's going to go probably. Here's Ferguson, empty backfield. Ferguson tries to turn upfield, does. Ferguson is going to be met at about the 11, so he'll get four. Second down and six. 
So the ball at the 11-yard line now for the Wildcats. That Red Bank defense has been on the side, on the field for a long time now. And basically, it's been a lot of Jace Ferguson the whole time on this drive. Yep, they're going to go empty backfield again. Uh, twins on each side. See if he runs again. He is. He's coming to the left side. He's going to run. Following a blocker. And he's going to be hit. He'll be dropped shy of the first down marker. <clears throat> he's down to about the seven. Matt Alston out there again leading Ferguson through that hole. Picks up about four, and it sets up a third down here. But about two, three yards. So here we go. Football down at the seven. They need to get just inside the five. Third down. Ball snap back to Ferguson. Ferguson shoving people out of the way. He'll have the first down, and he's going to take it down inside the five to about the two-yard line. Picks up five yards. It's a first and goal here for Central Clarion. Yeah, just nothing. Red Bank's got to make some adjustments and, and just move some people inside to stop the run with him. That's all. He's picking up five yards a clip, four yards, four yards, six yards, five yards, seven yards. The last five times he's touched the football, he's picked up pretty good yardage. Hasn't busted one, but picking up five, six, seven yards a clip here. From the two, first and goal. Ball back to Ferguson. Ferguson carrying the football, and Ferguson's into the end zone for the Wildcat touchdown. Yeah, two-yard run. It wasn't there. Bounced a little bit and a cutback, and Jace Ferguson puts the Central Clarion Wildcats up by six right now. Be seven pending Thomas Euchert's extra point. Euchert's on. Smith holding. Got a late-arriving player coming in to yeah. cover that left-hand side, that wing. Here's the kick on the way, and the kick is high, long, and good. Minute 49 to go here in quarter number three. We'll take a timeout. We're back with more for you. It's 21-14 Central Clarion up on Red Bank Valley. You're watching Carly Tire High School football right here on the EYT Media Network. Hi, my name is Jason, and welcome to Sweet Basil. Come on in. All right, it's the Central Clarion marching back out onto the football field. Jace Ferguson, his legs taking him down the field and getting that touchdown. 21-14. See what Red Bank can do here. Minute 49 to go in the third. So a lot of game to be played yet. Well, that was a whole Jace Ferguson drive, Mike. That's something that boom, boom, boom. Like I said, he carried the football there two yards for the touchdown. But before that, five yards, four yards, four yards, six yards, five yards, seven yards on that drive. Uh, so, Red Bank, they're a good football team. They've got to make some adjustments. Ball's going to bounce. Klaus is going to go back to pick it up, and he will. He's back to the five, comes back up to the ten. Klaus tries to turn. Klaus is going to be hit and drop. Good coverage that time by Central Clarion, and he'll only get back up near the 14-yard line. Looked like Jesse Sawicki down there, number four, making that tackle on special teams. So, good job by... Jesse Sawicki. So Red Bank Valley now trailing by the score here, 21-14. Wagner back out on the field, bringing the instructions from the sideline. And see, if you're Red Bank, I'm mean, even nervous about this. Because they can just score at will. I mean, they're going to move the ball down the field, all that kind of stuff. I you have complete confidence. you got a 10th grader, a quarterback, who's got a ton of experience on the single-season passing record. i got no worries if I'm a Red Bank fan. Here's Wagner looking to throw. Fires that football and again throws that ball short. Was coming to the right side over here to Carson Gold. That's the second time tonight. He's, he doesn't have his feet set back there. And when he doesn't, the ball falls incomplete. It's just kind of short hops on him, and he's just not square. He's not turning his shoulders to the line of scrimmage and letting that ball fly. 
Twins on each side now. Byers in the backfield with uh, Wagner. Wagner looking to throw. Wagner stepping up. Byers across the middle of the field. And boy, he's hit as he released that football. Flag on the play. See what this is. He tried to find Klaus across the middle. Yeah, Matt Austin was back there. Hold here against Red Bank Valley. See if Coach Eagleton will want this. Would be a third and ten. He's going to take yeah, it. He's, he's going to back him it. up. So it's, what, half the distance. So back to the seven. We've got to get some pressure. Should be about 17 or 18. Here, second down. Wagner takes the snap now, looking to throw again. Wagner across the middle, and it's going to be knocked away, and a flag's going to be thrown. We're going to have a pass interference. I was kind of waiting for that one. Yeah, Tommy Smith just got there just a little bit early, and they're going to throw the flag on him. Seeing. And I mentioned, like, on the last play, that, that Red Bank's got to get to a point where they got to stop some of this pressure on Wagner. We've been injured. <clears throat> Bulldog down on the play. Not sure if that was Kale, the intended receiver. You, oh, he's got a cramp. Apparently. Yeah. Can't have cramps late in October. <laughs> Not allowed. What was maybe a slightly warmer day? Give him a little bit of. It was there. warmer. Okay, I'll give it a. It was, was what seventy or something. Right. And it's, you know, then they got to get ready this week because they're calling for good cold stuff coming in. But you'll be heading <sighs> out. I'm. I'm, I'm Parts unknown. That's right. We can't tell. Can't tell. Parts unknown. Going to have to get somebody to fill in. Yeah, that was Kale. Yeah, we had the big cramps conversation earlier in the year. They just invented cramps, what, like 15 I think years so. ago? Because we, we never had cramps. We never had them. Well, I think just... we always said because they never gave us water. We were just used to it. They gave us those little rubber salt pills, those little <laughs> oh, gummy salt pills. Oh, don't ever tell pills. Jim Thornton that. I told him oh, that one time. No! I remember taking those little yellow yep. tablet salt pills and those gummy salt pills oh, and yeah. stuff. It's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe what, Worst those, thing for us. what those coaches did to us when we were kids. Yeah, it's made us tough, right? Here we go. It is a, a minute and a half to go. Second down here for Red Bank. And short. Looking to throw. Firing that football, and it is incomplete. Tried to find Klaus on that left side. Jace Ferguson and Mason Bur Burford down there, double coverage. <laughs> Burford upset, too. He thought he should have had that. Yeah, and Braylon Wagner with a little bit of Pressure, more pressure here in the second half, Clarion bringing. So third down, still about four here for Redback Valley. Ball sitting at the 21-yard line. They need to 25. See if they just uh, try to pick up this first down here or if they sling this one out again. He's going to go with the double sidecar in the backfield. And a flag. Uh, leaning in the backfield. It's going to be a legal procedure against Red Bank. So instead of four, it becomes nine. It was number 22 back there, Austin Eastlick, just leaning a little bit towards Fisher, and then the umpire threw the flag on him, basically. Got that lean going, and he just couldn't nope. couldn't stop, couldn't bounce himself out, Mike, <laughs> and he had to take a step forward and got the flag. They're down to nine. Now Wagner's going to try to sling it here. He does, and it's caught on the far side. Looks like it's probably short of the first down marker. That's Klaus with the catch. Boy, it's close. They're going to say fourth down and one. They need a nine. He's going to pick up eight. So fourth and one. I look over towards Coach Gold, the Red Bank head coach, and he's trying to rally his guys. So here we go, fourth and one. Wagner. Shotgun. They're going to try to draw them here and then call a timeout. We'll see. Well, we've got a lot of time. We've got 13 seconds yep. on the play clock, Mike, so we could be playing around here a good bit. Wagner, four, three, down to two. He's going to use a timeout. 
So they will use a timeout, talk things over. It's fourth down and one. It's very short yardage, 29 seconds to go here in the quarter. And I think uh, Coach Gold just wants to make sure here exactly if they're going to go for it that everyone's on the same page. It It's less than a yard over there. Yeah, I, I boy, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm going to punt this away if, if, if I'm down there. I mean, I, I know your offensive line is good too, but, boy, yeah, he brings Klaus in, Owen Klaus, to punt. Yeah, I think this is the right call here. I think they've just tried to get a little jump at least in everything. So Ferguson goes back deep. Yeah, good pick up there. Yeah, Jace Ferguson oh. back to return to punt. Why not? He's been running the ball all half. Klaus ready, fourth and one. Flag on the play. Now what? Legal substitution. We must have 12 guys on the field for for Clarion. Oh, boy. That'll give uh, Redback the yeah. first down. Should It should. Yep, there's the first down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And if you count Burford, that's 12. So there we go. The penalty gives Redback the first down. Too many men on the field. Wow, that's a big, big play in a close football game. We've seen a couple of times tonight <laughs> some key mistakes. <laughs> well, here we go now with 29 seconds. Red Bank. Wow, that's a big break for Red Bank to keep this drive going. Let's see if they can make something out of it, Mike. 21-14, Central Clarion leads here. Red Bank, though, getting a gift. Gets that first down. First and 10, ball just shy of the 30 at the 29. They're going to do that little pitch to Kale, and he's going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. And that clock's going to run here, and I think Red Bank's going to just let that clock run out to end this quarter. We'll see. Yeah, I doubt, yeah there's a differential. 32 on the yep. play clock and 11. Yep, they're going to come over to the sideline. That'll do it for quarter number three. That'll wrap up the Zocro Motors third quarter. 21-14, it's Central Clarion leading Red Bank, and you are watching Carly Tire High School Football right here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Throughout West Central Pennsylvania, people are losing their glasses. Well, they haven't really lost them. They just don't need them anymore. Thanks to the amazing LASIK surgeons at Laurel Eye Clinic. Call Laurel Eye Clinic and schedule your free consultation. All right, back at Red Bank Valley. Want to say hi to Jason down there in Tampa, Florida, rooting on Red Bank Valley. And then Bob Dunkel said us a kind of a neat fact. He said uh, Jason would have been, Jason Wyant would have been the starting quarterback on Red Bank's first District 9 championship, but he got hurt. And Jason Huffman was a freshman at the time, and Huffman now, of course, uh, took over the duties there. Huffman's now a coach here for Red Bank Valley. There you go. Bob Dunkel, always a wealth of information, whether I here know. or down in the Sunshine State. Well, if you're listening to the game, let us know and we'll try to do a shout-out for you. <clears throat> got those people down in South Carolina earlier in the game, Mike. They're having a driveway party. That's right. Although Dave had to talk like this a little bit so they understand what we said. Uh, Fort Mill, Up South Carolina. <laughs> Fort Mill, South Carolina people having a great time at a driveway party. So All right. Here we go. It's a new quarter. And this last quarter brought to you by the Clarion County Community Bank. Wagner working out of the shotgun. Second down here in about nine. Fires that football. It is picked off by Burford. Here's Burford turning and coming the other way. Burford's going to be hit. Ball comes back out. And Central Clarion says they still have it. We will see. All right, let's take a look. Here's the throw picked off by Burford. Burford spinning around the field. Ball came out at the end, and then Central Clarion looked like Smale. Smale was back on top of it. We have an injured Red Bank player. Central Clarion will have the football. So Burford with the interception, when he ran it back, it did come out. Well, Wagner had him, had Mason Klaus, number 12, but Mason never turned around to look for the football on the slant. And 
He just came up and picked the football off and ran the other way. So you could just see Klaus on the side after the interception. He just put his hands on his head like, oh, my gosh. But Wagner hit him. And, uh, you know, just one of those big plays made on the Clarion uh, Clarion side of the field. Take a look at Wagner. He's a little banged up. He probably tried to go in there to tackle somebody, and he's holding his right shoulder. Yeah, you were talking earlier, too, you know, about the big play in the game. When's it going to be in there? Is a huge one yep. with Central Clarion up by the touchdown here with 11:51, and while they attend uh, to the injured player over there across the field, just want to yeah. see here for a second. We may take a timeout here coming up. Well, he's getting up yep, now. Yep, he's getting up. That was is that Ross? Or? Brandon, yeah, Brandon Ross. Ross. Yeah. Boy, he's tough. I'll tell you what, tough as nails what they say about Tyler Oaks, too. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm more concerned. I'm looking at the sidelines, keeping an eye on Wagner. And he's in some distress down there with his right shoulder. A couple people checking him out on the sidelines and not reacting real well down there right now. Nonetheless, Clarion has the football. So here we go, Central Clarion with the football. They lead by the one score, 11.51 to go here in the fourth. Here's Ferguson in the shotgun, going to hand that football off. And running with that football, and that's Quinn, and Quinn's going to be dropped good, and he'll have a first down as he takes it all the way down near the 16-yard line. That's a gain of uh, about 12. Yeah, Brady Quinn starting to be a workhorse for the for the Wildcats here in the second second half. So Central Clarion here in the Dubrook Red Zone as they'll work from their fifteen the Red Bank fifteen yard line. Back with in the backfield. Ferguson following back with. He's gonna be hit. Back with driven backwards. And back with or uh, Ferguson's gonna be hit. And right there at about the 15-yard line, so no real gain on the play. Yeah, about six Bulldogs coming off the coming off the pile that time. Tell you what, they're smacking in there. Out there. It's been one of them games. You guys are going to be sore tomorrow. And, Mike, it looks like they're warming up. <laughs> Number 18, Eli Rex, sophomore. Throwing the football a little bit on the sidelines right now. Ferguson fires, looks for Burford. It is caught. Burford, touchdown. 15 yards. Ferguson to Burford. Well, Burford on a pretty big height advantage that time. Able to go up and get that football in the end zone and extend Clarion's lead to 27-14. Beautiful pass to Burford in the end zone down there. Euchard's on for the extra point try. This puts Central clearing up by the two scores. Here's the kick by Euchard. It is on the way. It's high, long, and good. 10.32 to go here in this football game. Central Clarion leads now 28-14 on Red Bank Valley. We'll take a break. It's Carly Tire High School Football on Explore Clarion at D9Sports.com. All right, so Central Clarion gets on the board. It's uh, Ferguson to Burford. Two-score lead now for Central Clarion. Big play there. Burford, who had the interception to help set them up, gets the touchdown. Byers will be in the middle. Klaus is on either side of him. Euchard will set to kick things off. He has not kicked it deep. Standing on top of the football, Mike. 
He's going to hit for that onside kick almost, and it's going to be recovered up top here by uh, Brock George. Yeah, and I'm taking a look <coughs> down there, Mike, to see what we're going to do quarterback-wise here. And I've been keeping my eye on. I think that is the question. Wagner, he's going to, I think. But he's he out. He's right here in front of us. Yeah, he's out. He's hurt. His his right shoulder giving him a a tough time on the sideline. Is so, that Kale? Uh, yeah, it is. It might be. So Kale's going to run as the quarterback here. I'm sure they're prepared for this as a backup quarterback. Oh, Kale drops it. The ball's loose, and Central Clarion's on top of the football. Oh, my. Big recovery that time for Central Clarion. That was Matt Alston on top of it. Yep, Alston got the football and just a high snap. It didn't look like Kale was actually ready for it. It was a high snap, and it just come off of him and falls down. So Central Clarion in great field position again. They have the football at the Red Bank 42-yard line. Or is it? That's midfield. Sorry, these yard markers. You're good. I think you got it at the 46. No. Yeah, 46-yard line. 46-yard line, and I think you're going to get a large dose of Jace Ferguson right now. So here you go from the 46-yard line. First and 10 here for Central Clarion. Ferguson looks to throw again. Tons of time. Fires it across the middle. Caught by Burford. Burford sliding. He's got the first down inside the 30 and down to the 29-yard line. It's a gain of 18. So Brett down there telling us it's starting to get a little bit of precipitation coming down. Haven't seen any umbrellas or anything yet. It must be relatively light. First down here for Central Clarion. Good throw by Ferguson. Uh, Burford open over the middle. Ferguson waited patiently until he cleared and laid that ball right on the numbers that time. Ball sits at the 29-yard line. It's a uh, first and 10 here for Central Clarion. We're going to have a timeout on the field. Take a timeout as well. 9.42 to go here in this football game. And uh, Central Clarion leads by the two scores. You're watching Carly Tire High School Football and Explore Clarion D9Sports.com. You can afford a gorgeous, custom-designed hardwood Kales kitchen for a lot less than you'd pay at a DIY store. Go to FactoryDirectKitchens.net. At Kales, there are never middleman markups or hidden charges that can add 40%. Go to FactoryDirectKitchens.net. That's FactoryDirectKitchens.net. Looking for a new Bobcat tractor? Northeastern Equipment Sales and Rentals has inventory on the lot, ready to be loaded up so you can get to work on tough jobs. Check out Bobcat of Clarion at 1214 East Main Street in Clarion. Got a shot uh, from Brett down there on the football field as Red Bank Valley heads back out there. Still attending to Wagner on the sidelines here at Red Bank Valley. Central Clarion, though, has a first and 10. That ball resting at uh, the Red Bank 29-yard line. We're under 10 minutes now, Mike, in the, in the fourth quarter. So this is a definite <coughs> got to stop Red, got to stop the Wildcats right here. Ball handed off. That's Quinn. Quinn changed direction, but a flag on the play. We'll see here what's going on with the flag. Quinn would have gained about enough, about nine yards, almost 10. Would have a first down, but we'll see. Clarion, the Wildcats backing up. Yep, they're going to have a hold against Central Clarion. So it'll set up a first and 20. Ball back to the 39-yard line. Clock rolling now and under nine and a half here to go. Larian getting some new personnel in. Going to bring Smale to this right side. Watch, because that oftentimes Ferguson loves finding him. <clears throat> Here's yeah. Ferguson. Keeps the football. Goes left side. Ferguson running. 
Gets 10, 15, 20. Ferguson forced out of bounds, and he'll have the first down. He needed 20, and he's going to end up getting about 22 or 23. All right, we're going to take a look here as the you can see the mist really picking up now. See it into the lights here at Red Bank Valley. Good job by Nico. Good job by Ferguson running the football and picking up a first down for his team. Into that Dubrook red zone goes Central Clarion now. One of those linebackers had a pretty good shot at him at Ferguson in the backfield and just missed him. Tripping him up. So Chase Ferguson creates another first down. Ball handed off. Quinn. This time Quinn's going to be hit and driven backwards. And boy, I'll tell you what, in there for is a Brandon Ross. All over Quinn. Yeah, and Brady Quinn's going to lose some yardage on yeah. that play. He'll be back right around the 20. It's a two yard loss. Second down here in 12. Again, both of these teams will see action in the single-A and double-A playoffs coming up here in District 9. We'll bring you all we can here on the EYT Media Network. Here's Ferguson in the shotgun. Ferguson gives it to Harrison over the left side. Here's Harrison making some room. Harrison running with that football down the left side, and Harrison will have that first down as he is down all the way inside the five at about the four-yard line. That'll be a pickup for him. It's about of, 15. Yeah, about 15 about for 15 him. About 15, and Noah Harrison taking that ball to the left side. Saw that cutback also. Came available and turned it up north and south. And sets his team up with a first down and goal at the three-yard line. Ball rest at the three. Here we go, first and ten. Central Clarion looks to jump up by the three scores here. Here's Ferguson. Takes the snap. Gives it to Harrison over the left side. Harrison banging his way, and he's into the end zone for the Wildcat touchdown. 7, 38, Mark here, at quarter number four. Central Clarion up now by the three scores. Good blocking by that left side of the Wildcat offensive line. You can see it from here, Mike. It was a really big hole on that left-hand side, and Harrison was able to turn it up, get one little bump by one of those Red Bank defenders and finds himself in the end zone for six point. Euchard on for the extra point. Kick is up and the kick is good. Show is 7.38 to go here in this football game. It's now 35-14 in favor of Central Clarion. We'll take the time out. You're watching Carly Tire High School Football right here on the EYT Media Network. Brookville Equipment has always been well known in the community as a great local employer. Very family oriented company. Brookville has a really great benefits plan here. We're pretty diverse in what we do from mining to streetcars to locomotives. We're helping the infrastructure of the country. Medical insurance, dental, vision, competitive wages, paid time off. It's an opportunity. It's something that you can enjoy doing. And you can apply right through our website. All right, getting set here as the rain's starting to come down a little bit harder here at Bulldog Stadium. Central Clarion set to kick things off. Yeah, I've seen all this rain, but I, I can't pick anything up on the on radar. radar. I think it's just there. a little bit of mist. There's, I don't see one umbrella in the stands. I think we're okay. Ball bounces around. Going to be picked up. And again, with that is a Caden Nicewanger. So 7.34 to go here in this uh, football game. Central Clarion leads 35-14. Wagner injuring that shoulder. It looks like he's out of this ball game at this point. See if they're staying with Kale. Yeah, I'm interested to see what they have here. Uh, penalty, too many guys. One, two, three, yep. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got an illegal substitution. So back him up five. 
And it is Kale remaining in there as the uh, quarterback. Tell you what, good football game this evening between these two. Central Clarion pulling away late here, but it was nip and tuck the whole way. Yeah, it was, Mike, and it still is. 734, yeah. you know, <clears throat> Red Bank can strike pretty quick on some plays. Yep, Kale can run. Kale's going to take that football forward and get up to the 30-yard line. Let's pick up a three-yard second down. And well, we're still about 12 or so. Ball right there at the 30. Red Bank still with three timeouts on the clock. They trail by the three scores. Kale. Yeah, running out a little bit of running out of time on the Red Bank side of the field. Ball snap back. He ended off. Is that Byers? Byers getting the carry. And he's going to take that. Gets up near the original line of scrimmage. Picks up maybe one or two. Sets up a third down now. And... Looks like still about 11. Mike, that's one of the keys for tonight's game. It was, you know, they wanted to get Byer 75 to 79. He averages about 79 yards a game, and he's not close to that tonight. You know, on six carries, it looks like he has about 11 yards, Mike. So that defense of Clarion doing a pretty good job. Kale, Smith, the initial hit. Fourth down. No gain really on the play. So fourth down, still about 10. And we'll have the punt coming up here for Red Bank. And that is Owen Klaus coming on to punt it away. Smale will go back deep here for Central Clarion. Yeah, Burford back deep. Dawson Smale back there, as you said. So here we go, punt coming up by Klaus. Good snap to Klaus, punts away. Boy, he boomed that one. And that's going to just keep going and going and going. What a punt by Klaus inside the five, and it's going to be down at about the two-yard line. Outstanding punt by Klaus. Uh, if the ball was on to 30, Mike, that looks like it's, you know, close to 70, a 70-yard 70 punt. Yeah, pretty close, you know. yeah. Pretty good job by Klaus. You said that all along. He's just both kickers in the kicking game, very strong on the clearing side. And Mason Klaus, Owen Klaus for Red Bank, fantastic job. Ferguson will lead the troops out onto the football field. Ball sitting at uh, right around that uh, two-yard line. Ferguson stands in his end zone. Well, I'm sure they want to get the clock rolling and get out of here, too. So, Chase Ferguson, watch that 25-second clock. Ferguson going to run. Boy, he's hit and dropped, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Maybe even lose a little bit. And I'll tell you what, can you radio down there and tell him he can't run the ball anymore? <laughs> because I don't have any more space on my sheet. I'm out. Nope, That's that it. means he's done. That's he's it. carried the ball yeah. 23 times tonight. Yeah, to I don't have. I don't. I do not have a 24 slot on my sheet. Yeah, you'll have to go down below. Starting to pick up a bit here with this uh, rain. Yeah, but nobody has an umbrella. No, it's kind of wild. Ferguson out of his own end zone. Second down here in 10. Ball two. Ferguson looks to throw. Fires that football, and it is uh, out of bounds. Smale on that far side was the intended receiver. Trying to see who the defender was over there. And, well, we'll figure it out. Three? I think that three was, or seven. Nah, I think it was three. I think it was the Drew Byers. Byers on that coverage. <clears throat> so when you throw the football like that and it's incomplete, it stops. The clock stops. So. So here we go. It is third down and ten. Third and ten here for Central Clarion. 
Ferguson alone in the backfield. He's going to run to the left side. Ferguson looks to throw. Sidearms it to Smale. First down. Smale is going to be out of bounds out near the 30-yard line. So that's a pickup of about 28. Yeah, it's just a nifty little pass by Ferguson. Waited, was going to run it, run it, run it, and all of a sudden saw Smale come loose and decided, hey, I'm just going to flip it out there. And Dawson Smale caught that football, picks himself up a first down. So a new set of downs, first and 10 here for Central Clary. Now you'll, I would think you would see just a steady diet of run, run, and run a little bit more. Clock had stopped because Smale was forced out of bounds on the far side. Ferguson running. Ferguson up the middle. Ferguson breaking tackles. Here's Ferguson. 35. Thir Ferguson 40. 45 yard line and finally tripped up. He'll have the first down as he will gain about 19. And that was uh, Owen Klaus on the tackle. Clock in a roll now. Okay, I made another column for him. So he's <laughs> he's good with 26 carries, 24 carry, 24 carries on the night now. He's going to add to his statistics like crazy. Double sidecar here for Ferguson. Down to under four minutes now to go here in the ball games. Clearing County Community Bank fourth quarter. Hand off to Harrison. Harrison over the left side. Harrison's going to be hit, and Harrison will lean forward, get about a yard. That'll keep the clock rolling here at Red Bank Valley. Ferguson came into the game tonight with 587 yards rushing the football, so he's going to definitely put on another 100 yards on that. those statistics. Central Clarion using all of that play clock here down to 315. Ferguson in the shotgun. See him sure just running this ball again. No, he's looking to throw. Ferguson looking to fire. Ferguson rolls to the right side. Back across the middle. Nice play by Klaus to knock that away from Smith across the middle. That'll that's, stop the clock, though, yeah. David, 258. And that's a tough throw. Ferguson rolling right, throwing back across the field, and Tommy Smith just couldn't do it. And Klaus, great play defensively to dive out there and knock that football down. So third down here in nine. Kind of surprised he threw the football there with the clock now stopped with 2.58. Quick score for you, Brockway 21, Cameron County 6. We'll get more in that Zocco Motors scoreboard. Ferguson looking to throw again here on third down. Steps up. Ferguson running. Ferguson leaps, and he's brought down. It is going to be very close. He's going to be shy of the first down marker. They needed nine. He's going to get eight. We'll see Central Clarion's offense just stay out there. Brookville 27, Ridgeway nothing in the third. I'll tell you what, that's a that's a dangerous. If I'm Coach Eggleton, I'm I'm nervous wreck with him running that football now with two minutes left in the 225 remaining in the football game. He came down really hard that time. If they get this first down. It's in the books here, and it, it right as of now, it's going to be into the books. It's just a matter of what they do here. They're going to run that clock right down. They're going to use timeout. And while that timeout goes, we'll get you caught up to Zocker Motor scoreboard for you. Bradford 19, Kane 7, Keystone 41, Monotov 15. Um, it is Carn City 27, Mount Union 13. Port Allegheny leads Otto Elred 47-8. And Punksy, 33, Union AC Valley, nothing. Wow, Punksy, the fourth. doing a pretty nice job this year, the Punksy Chucks. Yeah, they sure have, and uh, playing very well. They played the Central Clarion team tough when we went down there. It was a good game. It was earlier in the year. They they did a nice job. I think Coach has got that, that crew pointed in the right direction for the next couple of years down in Punxsutawney. That's good to see. Another solid team in District 9. Heading down the road, Mike. To pick our player of the game and send it down to Brett here. We'll oh get it boy. here. We don't want to say it too loud. We'll wait for a break and we'll just uh, text. Do you have your phone on you, Brett? All right, we'll text it to Brett. Yeah, we can tell him too. 
We don't want to sh- give it out yet till that post game show. So, Mr. K, just look it over. Here's Ferguson, fourth and one. Ball handed off. They will get the first down. <laughs> was, somehow that was Beckwith. Yeah, it was Beckwith again. I yeah. have a column for him. His second carry of the night for four yards. So that should get us there. We're going to set the set the ball on the 40-yard line. Dave Blair, official tonight, and his crew doing a really nice job. And they'll wind the clock. Yep. And I think we'll have a couple knees here. Yep, and this is going to do it. What a great game, though, tonight. We want to thank everybody here at Red Bank Valley and uh, rolling out the red carpet as always. And, boy, a tough fought contest all the way. We know the folks were along the whole way with us tonight and enjoying this one. A minute tw- uh, and a half as the clock will continue to roll here. And Central Clarion will get the win, 35-14. to 14. Yeah, and they'll find out where they're heading next week, Mike, yep. and Red Bank. Same deal. It's one of those games mm-hmm. now that the game is over, really, in some ways, it didn't mean anything in the standings or anything else. Uh, but both teams certainly wanted to, to win the football game tonight. They played their hearts out both yep. on the Clarion side and the Red Bank side. Yeah, meant a lot to both of those communities. Of course, the co-op with Clarion, Central Clarion. And the knee, and that's going to probably be one of the last times here as Central Clarion. They may have to one more time. Yes, they will. And that'll wrap up the Clarion County Community Bank. Fourth quarter here. There's the knee, and that'll do it. We're going to go to the Fun Bank postgame show. Central Clarion a winner, 35-14 over Red Bank Valley tonight. We'll take a time out. We'll let Mr. Cadis get caught up. And you are watching Carly Tire High School Football right here on the EYT Media Network. Zocro Motor Truck Sales in Clarion is an international Diamond Ed certified service department. As one of only 276 such shops in all of North America, you can be sure that when your medium or heavy duty truck needs service, the job will be done correctly at Zocro Motors. Our work is guaranteed nationwide at any international truck dealer and our parts and service prices can't be beaten. Our technicians are factory trained and factory certified. Don't trust a shop that just thinks that they can make repairs. Come to Zockrell Motors Diamond Edge Certified Service Department. If it's maintenance you need, click ZockrellMotors.com or call us for a quote on those jobs too. Our prices are great. Best of all, you know the repair is done right and it's guaranteed. Get your truck service work done at Zockrell Motor Truck Sales, two miles north of exit 64 Interstate 80 in Clarion. Ready to boost your team spirit? Look no further than shopteamwear.com, your one-stop destination for all your school and team apparel needs. We've got you covered whether you're a diehard fan searching for the latest gear or aiming to fundraise for your team. And here's the best part, you're in control. Choose the products and prices that work for you. Discover the ultimate apparel shopping and fundraising experience at shopteamwear.com. It's time to gear up, fundraise with ease, and make a statement together. Boost your team spirit, empower your community, shopteamwear.com, where passion meets fashion.
Clarion Forest VNA believes the emotional and physical well-being of a patient is enhanced by the patient receiving care in the familiar surroundings of home. Their staff of caring professionals work closely with physicians to administer quality care to meet the needs of each individual. As a pioneer in home health care in Clarion and Forest County, Clarion Forest VNA continue to grow to meet the community's need for in-home care, offering many different services and programs to meet the patient's need. Clarion Forest VNA, located at 271 Perkins Road in Clarion. Call us toll free at 1 800 262 2118. Central Clarion as we come back here in the first United National Bank, the Fun Bank postgame show celebrating in front of their band. Central Clarion goes undefeated on the season 10 and 0. With that 35 14 win here tonight over Red Bank Valley. We are in the first United National Bank, the Fun Bank postgame show. Mr. Cadis, statistics, Laurel Lie Clinic, how do they stack up? Some of them, Mike. We got unofficial statistics tonight. Um, Brandon Wagner, 11 for 19 for 143 yards on the evening. His night was called off a little bit earlier for a small injury that they had. The one thing that Red Bank wanted to try to do was get Byers into the football game and get him his 75 to 80 yards, and he couldn't get there. Six carries for only eight yards, so give credit to that Clarion defense a good bit. Um, Jace Ferguson on the evening, 16 for 19 for 238 yards, throwing the football on the evening, so he had a big night uh, here. And Jace Ferguson, uh, 25 carries for 92 yards on the night, so um, those are your statistics. All right, there you go again, brought to you by Laurel Eye Clinic. Quick check of scores by Zocro Motors here, Brockway 21, Cameron County 6, that's in the fourth. Brookville up on Ridgeway, 27-0. Uh, that uh, into the fourth quarter, uh, Chestnut Ridge beating Clearfield, or Clearfield up on Chestnut Ridge, 35-27. Um, it's uh, Kerwinsville and Tussie Mountain tied at 14 in the fourth. Uh, Hollidaysburg, 30, Dubois, 15. Bradford, 19, Kane, 7. Keystone, 41. And Monotop, 15. Um, Carn City, 34. Mount Union, 13. That's a big win for Carn City. <coughs> Excuse me, because that... Uh, was the win that one they wanted to have to put them into the playoffs. Port Allegheny over Otto Eldred, 47-8. And Punxsy up on Union AC Valley, 33 to nothing. There's your Zocro Motors scoreboard. It is time now for the Hager Paving Player of the Ball Game. Mr. Cadis, we thumb wrestled. You looked at your stats. You were the winner. But, and uh, who is our player of the game? Yeah, we still want to give those all to the like, offense and defense, 11 of them. But uh, I'll tell you what, Jace Ferguson uh, – just played a heck of a football game tonight, both throwing the football and running the football. And I know we give him the player of the game an awful lot, but uh, certainly deserved it tonight. Stepped up in a really big football game with Red Bank and uh, both teams coming into the game undefeated. And he came out on top tonight. So Hager, Paver, Hager Paving player of the game goes to number one, Jace Ferguson. All right, there we go. And again, looking ahead to next week. Sponsored by Northeastern Equipment, Bobcat, Clarion Kane, and Ole Ann. Well, next week we got the playoffs coming your way, and uh, we'll let you know where we're going to be at. Not sure yet. Uh, a lot of stuff is going to be figured out here over the next couple of days, and we'll let you know. Explore Clarion D9 Sports.com. Mike Kilroy we'll have all the stories on that, too. And, well, Mr. Cadis, this was a game. It gave us everything that we thought it would for the most part till very end there where Central Clarion was able to pull away, but – Boy, I'll tell you what, the fans are treated to a, a nice one here tonight. Mike, somebody had to win, and uh, Red Bank just put together a heck of a season and uh, headed into the playoffs. They have nothing to hang their hat on and everything. So uh, somebody had to win the football game tonight. Clarion came out on top. If they play 10 times, I'll bet you it split 5-5 five, five somewhere down the line. And uh, Red Bank played a very good football game, but Clarion played just a little bit better, enough to pull out the big win tonight. And both teams should have – should be very, very good hanging, heading into the playoffs. And uh, I'm sure Coach Gold and Coach Eggleton will get, have them ready to play, uh, whether it be next week or the week after. 
All right, so that'll do it for us here in the first United National Bank postgame show. I want to thank my partner, Dave Cadis, for Nico Cosma up on the camera up on top of the roof, Brett English down on the field, Tyler Oaks right there on the engineering tonight. A fantastic job as always. And again next week, we'll let you know where we're going to be at Tuesday night. Don't forget volleyball action. We'll be at Clarion Limestone as the District 9 girls volleyball playoffs continue right here on EYT. And that'll do it tonight. You've been watching Carly Tire High School football. Central Clarion, a 35-14 winner over Red Bank Valley. And you've been watching that Carly Tire football right here on Explore Clarion, D9sports.com. Have a great night, folks. See you again on Tuesday and next week. Have a great day.